Caught me coughing there in the intro. Welcome to the Sleepwire Show. My name is producer Steve, and it is week four of the fantasy football season. I was choking on the smoke from all the hot performances this week. It was a hot week with a lot of big, big performances and some stuff we just can't understand, but we're going to try to figure it out. You can find me on the Sleeper app at SW Steven on Twitter at Toledo Radio. With me again this week, Jason at BFTGDRMIL on Sleeper and at FLDRMILBARGE on Twitter. I wish he'd just be like at Jason12. It'd be so much easier. I tried being at Jason12 <laughs> and there was already an at Jason12 and 13 and it ended happens. up being like at Jason1742 <laughs> and it. I just didn't want to do it. I hear you. Oh, and a special guest this week. Max is not feeling well, but that's okay. Max, get better. We got the draft genius back on the show, the dynasty specialist. He's taking a break from the dynasty to talk a little redraft with us this week. So I'm looking forward to uh, hearing some names because this guy does research like high school, college. So he knows what's coming. Draft genius, it's nice to have you back on the show. Well, Dude, actually, I am yeah. I'm back and better than ever, man. It's a large and in charge attitude right here. I'm ready. I hear it. I'm you, so you, yeah, if you like what you hear from uh, from Draft Genius here, you can get him on the Sleeper app at SW Draft Genius and on Twitter at the Draft Genius. That's how you reach us. Let's get into some news and notes and stuff like that. All right, so don't forget, bye week start week four. This week, the Jets and the San Francisco 49ers are off. So another week for Sam Darnold to get better. Get those fluids in you, Sam. And not saliva this time. We need you back. The Jets are struggling. And the Niners will be off. A little news came out earlier today. Tevin Coleman may be coming back. So with the extra week off, maybe that backfield gets a little more complicated. We'll see. Other news. Colts Malik Hooker out four to six weeks with a knee injury. They got the Chiefs and the Texans coming up, so some high-powered offenses, and they're going to be out a little secondary help there. Falcons safety Keanu Neal out for the season. That really hurts that defense, and they were just kind of starting to look good too. And the biggest news of all, Giants Saquon Barkley out several weeks with a high ankle sprain. We'll talk about the Giants and all the stuff that happened this week with Daniel Jones coming up when we talk about them. But we're going to start with the Packers today. So what I saw from the Packers, again, it was a good first half, but they didn't look the same in the second. I don't know if they're not making adjustments at halftime, if it's a coaching situation. But so far, Rodgers hasn't been horrible, but he hasn't been great. What I think we really need to talk about, though, in this uh, in this Packers team is the emergence of MVS and the de-emergence or disappearance of Geronimo Allison. Uh, Jason, talk to me about the Packers. Are you ready to drop Geronimo and and start MVS week to week? Uh, so Allison had a good week last week. He was non-existent and looked very unathletic this week. I am ready to drop Allison. MVS is a week to week start for me. Uh, he just looked better. Uh, he also benef- benefited from the fact that uh, Adams was facing Harris all game. So Rodgers had to go to a second option. All right, Draft Genius, uh, you're the guy with the depth chart. D- is there anyone else on the Packers besides the big names that we should look at to emerge this year? Is there any wide receiver depth that we might want to stash if Allison continues to disappoint? Uh, I mean, I'm really on the MVS train. You know, I've been on that MVS train since they came in at the same time to the team. He's the better receiver. Uh, I really just want him or Adams. You know, I don't even like the tight ends. The tight ends suck. They had a combined three targets this past game against a poor Denver defense that really hasn't lived up to the, you know, the Denver hype. You know, it used to be the Denver defense, Seattle Seahawks defense. Those are the two that you just, you would, you know, just shiver. You know, every time you hear the name, you'd get cold shivering down your spine and you'd probably crap your pants thinking of (laughs) facing that defense. But now it's like, Okay, they got Joe Flacco at quarterback, and they got overrated Phil Lindsay. Come on now. <laughs> Packers did what they had to do. Aaron Rodgers threw, I think, like 27-ish passes, 29 passes. And he had a, a you know, Aaron Rodgers game, mediocre QB1 range game. I think the telling sign was not just MVS, but also 
the frequent use of Jamal Williams so yeah. far. I, mean, I wanted to talk about week that. Three, yeah. And he had more carries than Aaron Jones. He had more targets than Aaron Jones. I was a Jamal Williams fan. I'm not really anymore, so I'm not touting him, but I am avoiding owning Aaron Jones or Jamal Williams. If I have one, I'm selling. That's something I do want to bring up. And this is also a buy low time on Devontae Adams. You never get this. You never get this, ever. So buy low on Devontae Adams now. And I would actually sell MVS because you could get a more concrete piece. You might be able to get Joe Mixon if MVS does this again and Joe Mixon kind of busts again. Because Joe Mixon's really only had one good week. Yeah. Well, MVS has had two good weeks, week one and this week. So, in my opinion, somebody might buy if they're looking for a wide receiver help. Yeah, I was looking at Adams, too. Hasn't scored a touchdown yet. So, in standard, he's really rough if you're playing standard. In PPR, he's kind of keeping you afloat. But nothing yet what we saw last year from him. And he's just too talented of a guy to continue it. Um, and I think you kind of mentioned defense. I I I've been talking two weeks now. The Packers defense again. I think you can start them week to week. They're looking pretty sharp. They got the Eagles, the Cowboys, the Lions, and the Raiders coming up. So, um, couple beatable, couple beatable offenses in there, especially with all the injuries to the Eagles. That could be a real juicy matchup next uh, next game there for them. Uh, let's talk about the Vikings. I still am not sold on Kirk Cousins. I still think he stinks. All right, three weeks in, five hundred two yards, only three touchdowns. Okay, 37 of 63 passing. I'm not excited about this. Stephon Diggs has completely disappeared almost. I'm ready to buy low on Stephon Diggs, but I'm concerned that I'm buying garbage. So the problem with Diggs so far this season, it, it, this is two out of three games where he's had less than five targets. Uh, he hasn't had a season with less than five targets more than one game since 2015. It's been one each season since 2015 so he's not getting targeted they're they're trying to find the way to get Thielen the ball but the the passing volume just isn't there and most of that is because you've got such a great running game that they don't have to throw the ball there's going to be games where their run game's not going to be there when they play a little bit more tough uh tougher opponents on defense so you know digs going forward could be good but there's just not a lot, enough passing offense to go around there I mean, piggybacking off of the target stuff, I mean, Diggs has seen two targets week one, seven in week two, and three this week. Against my Oakland Raiders, they should have fed him targets. I mean, like literally brought it out on a silver platter and said, here is 10 targets. I mean, (laughs) Kirk Cousins is what I've always thought he was, and that's a mediocre quarterback. That's, I mean, that's, he's not a QB one. He's just a middle of the line, probably 15 best in the NFL. And that's all he needs to be. They got the run game going. Dalvin was 16 for 110 and he had five targets. So you take the 15 completions that Cousins threw five of those, I mean, sorry, the 21 passes that Cousins threw five of those passes. So basically a fourth went to Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook, I mean, he's what everybody thought he was coming out of college now that he's healthy. But then you have Alexander Madison or whatever the guy from Fox called him, Albert maybe, Albert Madison. I mean, this guy spelled in quotation marks Dalvin Cook and went 12 for 58 in a touchdown. So I think they just want to run it down people's throats. I mean, there was only two receivers, wide receivers that caught balls, and that was Diggs and Thielen. Thielen only had five targets, too. I just – I don't get what the Vikings are doing. It's not, you know, the same – This is it's like Adrian Peterson is back. I mean, they're just running it down people's throats. The tight ends suck, too. I just – I don't know. Maybe this is the passing of the torch at this point in time of Kyle Rudolph to Irv Smith because we saw Irv Smith, I think he had his most targets so yeah. far this season. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's increased since week one. His snap percentage has increased. He's three for three for 60 in this game, which is 12 points. I mean, that's a borderline low-end tight end one right there. I don't know. Maybe now is the time to buy on Irv before he blows up. Maybe this is just a one-week thing, but 
I am panicking going back to Stefan Diggs. I'm panicking because I own Stefan Diggs in at least 12 leagues, and I do not know what to do right now. So, are, well, are you selling him, or are you in the situation if you don't have him, are you buying I, him? I don't think I can sell him. That's the thing. I mean, somebody offered me John Ross for Stefan Diggs. So if that's the type of offers that I'm getting right now, I'm not selling. I'm holding him. Because, I mean, we know what Stephon Diggs could be. Well, okay. We all know, like, no, that, he's a that, he's that, yeah. top 12 talent. That says something, that you're holding on to him despite the struggles. I mean, that does say that you do believe in his skill, and you're not going to sell him for peanuts, uh, which I don't think I would either, but I definitely am looking to buy him. I, I think, I don't know, after John Ross this week, I don't know if anyone would take that trade. But, uh, yeah, I think Rudolph is completely droppable at this point. You just can't trust starting him. And, um, you know, we'll see how they do in the next couple of weeks. The Vikings got a tough defense against the Bears, but then they do get the Giants, Eagles, and Lions. So uh, very much similar to to the uh, to the Green Bay schedule, actually, no. now that speaking I look at it. Bears, speaking of the Bears, if Allen Robinson goes off tonight, I would sell him for Stephon Diggs. Okay. Score. The Broncos, I think mistakes lost them this game. They ran well. Quite a day for uh, – Quite quiet day for Sanders. Can't even read my own notes. Uh, the guy that I've been liking on this team for consistency has been Cortland Sutton. Just very consistent in a PPR. We're still waiting on that touchdown. Um, Draft Genius, let's get to you because you, you had some choice words about Philip Lindsay there. Explain to me this, this backfield breakdown because it seems like it's very even split 50-50. I'm a Roy's guy. You know, I've always been Rolls Royce. I mean, that's that's me. Phil Lindsay is a gadget guy and an overrated. He's like that. I mean, I don't even know. I don't want to disgrace the guy, but that's all I have is negative things to say about him. He's not really hyper efficient. Uh, I'm not just. I'm just not a fan of him. Royce Freeman's the bigger and better athlete, size, speed specimen. He can do everything. I think Phil Lindsay can do at least, if not better, run. He's just, uh, I don't know. The Broncos continue to just be horrible, I guess, at play calling. And everybody knows how they're going to use Royce Freeman. And so it's, it's interesting to me that you're on Freeman and off Lindsay when Lindsay continually outproduces. We can talk about what kind of athlete Freeman is, and we can talk about what his draft capital was, where he got drafted, and what was expected of him. But until he shows it in the NFL, Lindsay's the better guy. Now, I don't like either one of them as long as they're splitting 50-50. So you need one of these guys to have an injury to make the other one fantasy relevant. And until then, like Lindsay for me is a sell high. He had two touchdowns this week. And maybe somebody just looks at the final, t- his point total for the week and actually wants to come get him. But uh, it, it's it's hard for me as a guy who owns both of these guys in different leagues at different positions to say why Freeman is so much better. You just haven't seen it on the field yet. Well, on the field, I'm looking at last week. So week two, they played the Bears. I mean, Royce Freeman dominated 4.9 yards per carry. He had 6.9. Th- oh, no, sorry, 9.6 yards per catch. On that defense, he had seven targets, caught five of them for 48 yards. I mean, he put up a good uh, RB1-ish week. He had 16 points. Lindsey, on the other hand, put up, I want to say, 12-ish in PPR. I mean, he's he averaged 2.8 yards per carry. So that's week two against the Bears. How did week three go? Week three was different. That's the thing. That's why I don't like Lindsey because he's like a – he's a gadget guy. You know, I, I just – I just feel like Royce is the better back. He's going to be more consistent to own, especially this year, the way that they're using him this year. Uh, the only thing that worries me is Lindsey gets the goal line touches, so it makes no sense to me. Mm. It just it doesn't make sense to me. But I know he had more this past game. Week one, they were about the same against Oakland. I prefer Freeman. I, I feel like Freeman just uh, – I don't know. Just Freeman, in my eyes, is better. And I could go on and on and on and on and on, but I don't think we have that much time. One thing I do want to say is go buy Emmanuel Sanders because he just had a horrible game. Whenever we saw in week one, he put up 20-ish points, 
and in week two, he put up 30-ish points. I mean, he's sitting at, in standard, the 19th best wide receiver right now. In PPR, he's the 16th best. Somebody's going to be shitting their pants about that three-point game he just put up against the improved Packers defense. I also want to say with Sutton, and we're waiting on the TD, he missed one. Flacco missed a wide-open Sutton. He just threw it to the wrong shoulder, and Sutton couldn't get under it. But he he would have easily coasted in for a touchdown there. So the touchdowns might come. It's just uh, just like with everything with the Broncos, Flacco's going to hold him back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're right. I mean, Flacco is – yeah. Flacco is Flacco. Mean, does what he does. Case, case Keenum over Flacco all day. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, exactly. I mean, I, I'll take it. Yeah. Um, Noah Font continues to improve and uh, – you know, it's encouraging to kind of see that he's getting a good yards per catch, yards per target. You know, he's getting some good looks in his rookie year. That's encouraging if you own him in Dynasty and you were a little nervous like I am. All right, so Font, maybe add tight end in deep, deep leagues, maybe. Uh, the Bills, let's move on to the Bills. Josh Allen showed us another mix of good and bad. He's still developing. He faced a pretty bad defense. I expected him, I think a lot of people expected him to have a really good game. Uh, John Brown kind of off a little bit, four or five for five this week, and um, he'd been playing really well. Frank Gore obviously was like a major waiver wire target last week, obviously, because he got all the work pretty much. TJ Yeldon got a little bit of action, though. Um, I guess the guy, and I want to give Max credit for Cole Beasley. we got to talk about Cole Beasley and PPR. Just, just very consistent. I mean, Similar to Sutton, similar to Christian Kirk in PPR, not scoring touchdowns, but solid PPR floor. This guy, if you can get him and you need a, a nice solid flex for the bye weeks, 9, 12, and 12 points for PPR the first three weeks. Um, let's talk about the tight end, Dawson Knox. He's going to be on the ad list. Do you believe that this continues? Uh, I'm, I do. You know, I'm, a, I'm a Dawson Knox fan. I own him a lot in my dynasty leagues. We've seen his snap rate kind of stay the same. I'm not sure what it was because it hasn't been released yet from the game, but I think it's around that 60% range. So his targets increased since week one. I mean, he just he just had bigger plays this game, but it's encouraging to see that he is leading their tight ends in snaps. He's leading their tight ends in targets. Uh, they do have Tyler Croft coming back soon, so I'm not sure how that will affect it, but I think somebody's going to impulse pick up Dawson Knox right now in redraft, impulsively pick him up. He's going to have another bad week or mediocre week. Then they're going to drop him for the next hot guy, and that's when you strike. Gotcha. I would okay. I wouldn't waste my high waiver priority on him. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And and he looked good. He looked physical, which is nice to see. He he also led the the team in um, routes run by a tight end. So it wasn't just that he was in there. He wasn't blocking as much. He he was out running routes, which is nice to see. Um, but uh, but Allen looked rough in spots in this game. I agree. I mean, Allen, Allen is what Allen is. I mean, he's so sporadic. Poor guy. He's like a he's like the white Cam Newton. I mean, he's just <laughs> he's hit and miss. I mean, it just and Cam this year has been just all miss. But Allen is just I, I don't know. I wouldn't feel comfortable starting him really in a one quarterback league. It's just. He can do a lot, but then sometimes he – it's like a great matchup, right? He has Google. such a safe floor. He has a safe floor with his rushing. That's right. the only reason why you, you start him, especially in four points per touchdown leagues. Like he can – just just being able to get out and run uh, gets you enough points that, that most weeks he's not going to hurt you. But, yeah, he had a bad game against a bad defense. One thing I do like is seeing Frank Gore get all that usage. I liked seeing TJ Yeldon get, you know, spelled in eight carries for 30 yards. Uh, I think he had three targets. He did, had a fumble too, but I like seeing him get used because I do think he's the second best running back, if not the best, in that backfield. Uh, one last thing on Dawson Knox. I mean, this guy, he has the size to be a dominant tight end for the Bills. I just don't see them using him like he should be used. He's 6'4", 254. I mean, he can be a good red zone option for Josh Allen, but I think that they're going to rely on the speed with John Brown just taking shots downfield or taking shots 15 yards 
and having Cole Beasley run the underneath routes. I think that's the game plan all year long yeah. until they draft a receiver. Right. I do think this is a good week to buy John Brown as well because we saw him blow up against a Jets defense. That's kind of sort of okay. They're probably about 20th in the league if I had to rank them. But his targets are steady. I mean, 10, 8, and then a low 5 right here. If somebody says, oh, wow. If you can sell the Bengals defense as a defense that's hard to beat and you could buy on John Brown, now's the time to do it because they have New England next, which is rough matchup, but then they have Tennessee, a bye week, and then Miami, Philly, Washington, Cleveland, Miami again. So you got a five-week stretch where John Brown can finish as a wide receiver one based on the safeties on those defenses. Absolutely. Um, I'm a little concerned for Devin Singletary just because Frank Gore has been looking pretty good and having a good workload. I think they're going to bring Singletary along. Although he's looked really explosive when he has played, I'm afraid they're going to kind of bring him along slowly. And um, I don't know. Maybe this is a good time to buy him while he was injured, while he didn't play. Maybe you can sell that. It's a possibility. Jason. You can sell Gore as the uh, as taking over some of that share. Yeah, I mean, go to the Saquon owner. They're going to be needy because if they went Saquon early, they might not have good running back depth uh, in their team. So Gore might be a guy that you could sell to him. Uh, let's look at the Giants. Let's go to the Giants with Saquon out of a couple of weeks here. Obviously, the question is running back. Who are you picking up? Wayne Gallman, Elijah Penny. I don't know who I would trust. The, the skill drop-off is just huge. Uh, I don't know if either of them are going to be used with – the game plan because to me I feel like it's gonna be it's gonna be Ingram Shepherd Tate all day. Yeah, I agree. I I don't pick up either one of these guys. Yeah uh sometimes being the one on your team isn't worth picking up and Saquon Barkley only did what he did in that poor offense because he's so talented. But if you take a guy off if you take a guy like Wayne Gallman who's most teams third running back on their team he's not going to get any yards uh they didn't use him much in this game they were well behind when Saquon got hurt so it was it was more about Daniel Jones throwing the ball but I don't it's not like they're ever going to have much of a positive game script for a running back anyway they're going to be behind a lot that defense is awful I love Wayne Goldman (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to be on kind of the opposite side. I love him, and I am picking him up. Uh, I do have a bid in my biggest money league, which is about, I'm not going to say the, the price, but it's a big, big money league. I'm spending 20% of my fab on Wayne Goldman. Wow, okay. Uh, this is a guy who I think can be a solid RB2 at least. That's if they don't bring somebody else. If they bring somebody else on and they just go committee approach, I'm probably shooting myself in the foot. But he should get the lion's share of the workload for the upcoming weeks. And we know at least it's four weeks. I mean, those four weeks can make or break your playoff potential. That can give you such good seeding in the playoffs. Those four weeks are important. So I'm mainly looking at the depth behind Goldman. There is nothing. They can go and they could get a JJ. They can go get a CJ Anderson who just got released. Or they can even try to train for a running back but I just don't see it happening. I see them rolling with Wayne Gallman. There's a reason why he has stayed the backup for, I think it's three years now. Yeah. Easy. I think that they, they trust him with the system. I think that being he's the second running back, this is a key thing to keep in mind. Being he's the second running back on the team, what quarterback did he practice with all year? Daniel, Daniel Jones. Jones. I thought so that was hypothetical. That you, you wanted us to actually answer that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I did, but <laughs> I mean, if you're keeping that in mind, Daniel Jones has to have some report with him, right? Yeah. If true. you practice with him for since you got drafted, I mean, we know Daniel Jones was taking some of the uh, first team reps, but I mean, it wasn't all of them. So he had to be practicing with some running back. The only thing yeah. I see happening that could hurt Wayne Gallman, if he's not your top waiver claim, in my opinion, he should be. The only thing I see happening is if they bring back Rod Smith and he's healthy because I believe Rod Smith is a true – I mean, he can he can be a workhorse for a team. Okay. That would scare me. Rod Smith got cut, but supposedly they stayed in talks, and he'd be cheap. You give him a 750 k contract with a little bonus if he plays four games, he'll have nothing but hunger in him, you know, to, to prove himself. 
He's been stuck behind Zeke for the past three, four years with the Cowboys. I think that guy would push Gallman and potentially take the spot from him. That's a bold prediction that, you know, <laughs> out of the blue. But I really, really believe in Rod Smith, and they have been connected with him. They signed him, went ahead and got him this offseason, whenever They could have had J.J. They could have had a C.J. Anderson. They could have had, you know, so many different running backs. They chose him, and then he got hurt. So Wayne Gallman is a good pickup going way back to the beginning of this i would pay for wayne gallman scott fishbowl and picking them up so all right all right i don't think there's anyone else you're really selling on this team um i don't think there's anyone available to buy everybody one person pretty well this from year. waivers that i forgot to mention yeah is uh slayton darius slayton he too has practiced with daniel jones all year okay darius slayton Drafted this year as a rookie, he saw five targets, which was, I think, second on the team or third on the team behind Shepard and Ingram. He had 82 yards, caught a long ball. I think this is a guy you could get for free. I don't think anybody's going to put in a claim for him. So he could be the last guy on your bench, and all he can do is help you. Okay. So I I like Slayton. He looked good. I just worry, especially with Tate coming back, uh, once Tate gets back, uh, does his role decrease because now he's the – the third wide receiver, but the fourth option on the team. And he's really the only potential X wide receiver in my mind, because you have X, Y, Z and H and F and all that. Shepard is a slot. Tate is a slot. So I'm very interested to see how they use Shepard and Tate on the field at the same time. I think uh, we could see in three wide receiver sets, Slayton all the way to the left, Tate at slot and Shepard all the way to the right at Z. And they could just go from there. So I, I don't know. I mean, if Daniel Jones performs like this every week, I want all the receivers. You know, well, I, I think this is a one week thing. Okay, I want to get into that. Like, because he was that was a big question. Like, he was one of the quarterbacks who took over this week, and out of three or four that we've seen very little of, did we like what we saw, and do we think he can continue? So I like some of what you saw. He did have poise in the pocket. He also fumbled it a couple times. Uh, there were moments where he didn't look great. There were moments. So I think the announcers talked about it a little bit. Uh, he doesn't see the blitz coming a lot of times. So he, he likes to put that ball back behind him and it gets swatted out. Now, having said that, uh, he led them on a second half comeback. They looked great. I think that's fool's gold. A lot of that is the Buccaneers defense that uh, looked good in the first half and then fell apart in the second half. But one of the one of the touchdown passes to, was to a wide open Ingram. There was nobody near him, and he ran it for seventy five yards. So I think he's a little bit of fool's gold. They're not as good as he looked, but uh, and they also have an Eagles team next week. Which oh, I'm, I apologize, I had the uh... so he has the Redskins next week, but then he has the Vikings, Pats, and Cards. So that's. Redskins may be a start, but do you really trust him against the Vikings, the Pats, or, or the Vikings or the Pats? The card's probably a good start. Like, he's a streamer. Yeah, he, and he's a very, very good pickup in two quarterback leagues. Uh, going off of what Jason said about the Buccaneers defense, I mean, they're just, like he said, they're not really good. I mean, they played – who they played in week one. I think it was San Fran, and San Fran really isn't that good. Then they played Carolina, and all you got to do is shut down McCaffrey, as they did, and you play all right defense. They still gave up 350 yards in week two. They just gave up 384 yards this past week. I think they had uh, something like 14 third down attempts, and that's where the Giants were struggling the most because they only converted four. They had uh, 32 points, which is the most that they've allowed all year. They're not that good of a defense. So I, I would not be spending a lot of money on Daniel Jones unless I'm in a two-quarterback league or a waiver priority. I think the story here is the usage of Shepard, Slayton, and Ingram. We already knew Ingram was you know, wide receiver one on the team. But how about Shepard coming back from injury, collecting nine targets for 100 yards and a touchdown? I really, really like it. I really do. I think uh, Daniel Jones, as Jason said, uh, I mean, it is it is kind of fool's gold. You look at his four carries for 28 yards and two touchdowns. I don't think he's carrying it for, for a touchdown every week. Right. I just don't. That's yeah. me personally. 
Uh, I mean, on the other side of the ball, by Chris Godwin. Go by no, him. We're not to them yet. Hang on. We're not, yeah, we're know, not, we're not to that team. I, I'm getting ex- I got excited because I'm thinking of a play right now. <laughs> and I'm just I'm just thinking of a play from the game. I'm just spinning it out there. We'll talk more on it in a little bit. Oh, yeah. By Chris Godwin if you can. Pick up uh Darius Slayton off of waivers. You don't even have to use a claim on him. He'll yeah. be there tomorrow morning. Yeah, absolutely. He'll be there in the morning. The Jets uh are in by week four. Uh, not a lot to talk about for this team, to be honest. Uh, we kind of hope that Darnold gets back because uh, Crowder and Anderson were just not just not usable this week. And uh, Le'Veon Bell had a tougher game, too. Obviously, they, they went 0 for 12 on third down. Fol- uh, Falk is not the answer. So I guess, for me, these the, the offense skill players are all buys right now, I think. Um, not, not buy super low, but, I mean, I think you can get – if you could buy one of these three, Crowder, Anderson, or Bell, and you didn't have to pay a lot, who would you want the most? Well, so I want Bell the most, but you have to pay the most for him. Right. So if, like if I like my best, team yeah, and I don't want to blow it up, I'm buying Crowder because when Sam Darnold does come back, that's a lot of targets going that way, and you can probably pay a whole lot less. I'm with you on that. Uh, I do love Crowder, buying Crowder, because we saw – I mean, how how many targets did he have week one? Was it like 17? I mean, it was phenomenally just uh, amazing coming out performance. This guy just had the best first game of the year ever. 17 targets. So he caught 14 of those for 99 yards. Wow. I mean, that's all I got to say is wow. Like, I just I can't believe it. Le'Veon Bell is somebody I would target. Doesn't matter the price because but- I, I see him as an RB1. One guy I'm trading for him is Marlon Mack, and I love Marlon Mack, top 12 Marlon Mack, but I'm trading him for Le'Veon Bell because somebody's going to see Marlon Mack, who's the number nine PPR running back because he had a phenomenal week one, 27 points. Week two, he slumped, but he still had the 20 carries. So you can sell the work, the workhorse Marlon Mack. You can say, look, this dude's a workhorse for his team. Uh, I don't really need him. Uh, I'm trying to get a boost at my running back, so I'm going to trade you Marlon Mack and then another receiver or whatever for Bell. Then you get a solid upgrade at running back. Gotcha. All right. Uh, yeah, the rate of uh, – so Crowder's the bargain The bargain there. Jason, you got anything else on the Jets? Uh, they're lucky their their buy is now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's that's just it. Like, they're lucky they had a week four buy because it'd be another loss next week if or this week if, if they had to play anybody. Yep. Uh let's talk about the Ravens. Uh Draft Genius, I know you're a big time a big time Jackson fan. He didn't look as good this week. A lot of people were talking, well, you know, he faced two pretty crappy defenses week one and week two. This was kind of the big test. I heard people saying it's uh it's bird versus magic. I don't know about that, but I think that Kansas City defense really schemed against some of his skills and he didn't look great passing. But um, I know you're going to try to sell me on on why Jackson is the greatest of all time. Look, all I can say is haters going to hate. <laughs> that's, that's all I can say. I mean, they the Ravens got the most. They put up the most yards on the Chiefs this year. So I don't know what more we want them to do. They put up 452 yards on the Chiefs. I mean, as a team. Now they did have to run the ball a little bit more. But Jackson showed why he's uh, QB one. I mean, come on. This dude is the QB1 in my book, okay? It's him and Mahomes, QB1 territory every single week. Jackson is my pick. I mean, this guy, we saw what he's capable of. We saw the improvement in passing. Yes, he lit up Miami. Yes, he lit up the Cardinals. He also kind of had the Chiefs pretty scared. He was coming back. He has that it factor. This guy, I mean, the Chiefs are, it's a rough place to play, okay? It's a it's a rough stadium to play. We know that. He ran eight for forty six. He passed for two sixty seven. The only thing he didn't have is a passing touchdown. If he would have had a passing touchdown, I mean he probably would have been close to thirty points in your league. It's him, it's Mark Ingram balling out. My goodness, Mark Ingram looked like he was at Alabama again. <laughs> and then you have the story of Marquise Brown, which I want to touch on. All right. That is Lamar Jackson's favorite target. Well, we know that now. It's it's week four, ladies and gentlemen. Week four is here. It's this week. I can guarantee you Marquise Brown will lead the team in targets. I will bet 
my life savings on it. But, the, but he caught two for nine, right? So two for nine. Didn't have that many any big plays that happen like normally. First week he had 35 points. Second week he had 19. Now he has seven. His targets went from 5, 13 to 9. His snap shares increased 18% week one, 65 week two, and then I think it's 78 or something this week. This is a guy I'm buying right now. I already saw somebody freak out about him, said Marquise Brown is available. <laughs> After one week, because come on. I'm well, going to give you – I'm going to sell you Darren Waller for Marquise Brown, and I'm going to be happy with it. Well, and so and I, Andrews, too, took a dip this week. Are you buying him as well? I would, um, but Andrews was hurt, and I think that's that's yes. where it showed. Andrews right. was hurt. He he almost didn't play. He probably shouldn't have played. Uh, Lamar, to me, this was a bad like a bad game. I know you're trying to upsell it as hey, he's he's one B to Mahomes one A, but he's really one Z to Mahomes one A. Uh, that Kansas City Chiefs defense hasn't stopped anybody all year. At one point, Lamar was sixteen for thirty five for only two oh six. And that's like before the last drive of the game. He didn't scare anybody yesterday. They took him out of his game. Marquise Brown was wide open multiple times, and they threw it deep to him on several occasions in that game, and he just got missed. You, he, over, he got overthrown. And that happens to any quarterback, don't get me wrong. But, man, against this Chiefs, Chiefs defense, it should have been way easier, and it wasn't. So that's what scares me about Lamar. Don't get me wrong. He's still one of the best quarterbacks this year. He's going to be one of the best quarterbacks going forward. But it's not sunshine when he's not playing the Dolphins and the Cardinals. Well, he's got a decent come upcoming schedule, I think, for some big points with the Browns, the Steelers, the Bengals, and the Seahawks. So, um, if if any if anybody's selling him, I say get him. If anybody's selling Brown, I agree with Draft Genius. He's a buy. Um, I'm thinking about maybe if I need a, a roster spot, dropping Justice Hill. He just isn't looking very involved. I know he's highly touted. And good depth. I guess you hang on to him if you have to, but I think I think he's droppable and pick upable later, kind of thing. They're using Gus Edwards too much for Justice Hill to be involved at all. Yeah, and yeah. and that's what it is. They, you know, this could have been a game where Justice Hill saw some action because Absolutely. he's supposed to be a receiver out of the backfield, and yet they still just ran it with Ingram and put Gus Edwards in uh, when when uh, Ingram needed a spell. Justice Hill just doesn't have any time in that in that backfield like yeah that's what i'm saying you can drop him and maybe grab him again i don't think anyone's rushing to get him i am buying mark andrews he, he's still the number two tight end in standard and ppr you know you have evan ingram number one in both formats then you have waller i think he's third and then kelsey is fourth you can get andrews the cheapest out of all four in my opinion absolutely all right move on to the cardinals now uh, crabtree's out of town crabtree's released Kyler Murray struggled a little bit this week because of that offensive line. Had a few drop passes, too, that would have been um, a, a lot of plus yards. Um, the big one that I liked about this, we saw him rush for 69 yards on eight carries. So we were kind of waiting for him to kind of get it on the ground, and he did. Uh, again, I, I mentioned Kirk, Christian Kirk every week. The target share is just beautiful. Wasn't uh, wasn't super efficient week one, but was pretty efficient this week. Not a ton of yards, but just missed a long touchdown pass. And uh, so I think he's, if you're buying for PPR and somebody's selling Christian Kirk, I like him. Um, DJ had a bit of an off week as well, so he might be a buy low. So what's tough this week is Kyler Murray, 5.7 yards per completion. Yeah. that That was yeah. the average. It's just... For any of these wide receivers, Fitzgerald had a touchdown, but he had to fight to get that touchdown. Um, he had the second most targets on on the game for for Arizona. Um, so, a stat I saw before the game was that Fitz had the most targets out of the slot, and Kirk had the second most or the third most in the NFL. It's it's nice to see two guys out of the slot that often, and they're both catching the ball. It's just if if Kyler Murray's only going to throw. 5.7 yards past the line of scrimmage, it, it's going to be hard for any of these guys to do anything worth note. But he's just chucking it. I mean, 54 attempts, 40 attempts, 43 attempts. Those are his, those are his attempts the first three weeks. I mean, he might. I don't know. He might be leading the league in attempts right now. So, yeah, the volume is going to be there for everybody, but you're right. It isn't a push-down-the-field offense yet 
Um, I wonder if it will turn into that. I don't know if the offensive line is going to allow them to really play a push down the field passing attack this year. Well, so that offense also looked gassed by the end of the game, and I and they have an increased snap count because of the air raid offense. Yeah. So yeah. I, they looked by the end of that game, that team looked exhausted, especially on that O line, <laughs> which is bad to begin with. Right. So the Arizona Cardinals. I'm liking what I'm seeing from David Johnson, but I am selling him because, I mean, this guy, he's just going to be inconsistent all year, in my opinion. You know, week one, he was 18 for 82. Great outing, six reception, 55. RB1 production, baby. Last week, he's had seven attempts. Yes, he got hurt, but on those seven attempts, he only had two yards per carry. Then this week, he goes 11 for 37 for 3.4. He got most of his production in the receiving area. I, I'm just, I'm just not on him. You know, I, I'm just not on the DJ train right now. I think he will never be what he could be. I'm picking up Bird if I need a, you know, a player that I can get for free. If I need a player with a little bit of upside, Bird, I'm looking his way. I'm buying Christian Kirk because once he gets a touchdown, <laughs> it's over. I mean, it's it's over. I've been calling Christian Kirk. In the dynasty world, now he's entering redraft. He's finally coming to the party. You know, he just showed up, hopping out the limo. He's looking <laughs> good, but he doesn't have that arm candy on his arm. He yeah. doesn't have that touchdown, you know, to show him a little bit of attention. Once he gets that arm candy, that touchdown, it's over. He's taking over the show, I'm telling you. Watch Christian Kirk. Buy him if you can. Sell Colin Murray. I just don't trust him. He's too erratic. Okay. All right. All right, so let's talk about the Dolphins, or rather, let's not talk about the Dolphins too much because they stink. I call them Suck City. Drake uh, continues to be kind of a desperation play, especially in PPR. He's not doing anything for you, really. Kind of a whatever floor, 10 point, 10 point, 4.5 over the past three weeks. Preston Williams is probably the most interesting player on this team right now. Uh, consistently, targets have been going up. Had 12 this week, still only caught four. But, I mean, for PPR, he's giving you, like, a 10-point floor, it seems like, so far. He had the touchdown week one, so that kind of saved it. Um, is that the only guy I really want to get and start? Like, I'm dropping Bellage. I'm probably dropping Devontae Parker. I don't think I'm buying anyone on this team, and I don't think anyone's buying anyone from this team. I think the only reason you hold anybody on this team is Drake and hope he gets traded. I mean, that's literally it, like – He's got a ten point what ten points the last couple of weeks, which is okay. Yeah, if you if you're desperate, but really he's sitting on your bench hoping he goes to a better team. I wish they would just give him the eleven carries they're giving Kalen Balaj per game. I mean, let's be real; he's so much better than Kalen Balaj. In my opinion, they should just feature Drake. I mean, work with the, what you got, buddy. You got the problem Rogue. is, but the problem is they don't want to win. So they don't that that doesn't factor into it. They don't care to win. They don't like that's why team players are begging off this team. It's not because they're bad, because plenty of players have played through plenty of bad teams, but the coaches have made it obvious and the front office has made it obvious that their goal is not to win games this season. And Drake is the better player, so why play him when when you could A hurt a trade piece and B, actually have a shot at being in a game. They were in this game at halftime. Drake fumbled the ball away. But they're 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 just not playing to win. So they're you know, anything you'd think you'd want them to do, they're just not gonna do it because it doesn't help them lose for next year. Yeah. Um but what they should do is they should keep Rosen at quarterback because he makes it I think he's was best for the team. Yeah. Even though they don't want to win, at least kinda, you know, sell it. I mean the guy Played pretty good against the Dallas defense on his first NFL outing on a new team with new teammates and all that. One guy I am buying from this team is Preston Williams because he's cheap. Yeah, Nobody knows who he is. But his snap share is increasing week to week. His targets are increasing week to week. He just saw 12 targets with Josh Rosen. Yeah, That's a lot. If he catches three more of those, he might have – might have hit 20 points, then everybody would know who he is. Right, yeah, diamond in the rough. He's the only guy I was actually looking at on this team. Uh, that's that's it. That's all I want to do for the Dolphins. We'll talk about them later. 
Uh, Patriots, obviously, everyone knows Antonio Brown's gone. Edelman got a little banged up, but he should be okay. James White, congratulations on the new baby. Um, I think this isn't rocket science, but everyone's going to want to add Philip Dorsett. Is this the guy we got to add? Is he on the top of your waiver wire list? I've had him since week one, so no. I've had this dude since week one. I mean, he's a – we know what he was in college. We remember. I mean, this guy, he's a baller. He's a baller, baby. That's it. I think there's a real chance that not every week, but every other weekish, he can outproduce Josh Gordon on their team. Now you could say I'm out of my damn mind. This guy runs a four three. He has amazing speed, amazing burst. He can beat anybody. He's like another Brandon Cooks. Like that's who I would compare him to the most. Brandon Cooks. He is a weak winner. That's a guy I love. I mean, I'm, I've had him everywhere. I will continue to have him everywhere because, as always, in my head, I am right and you are wrong. Obviously, I'm right about <laughs> Philip Dorsett from this week. Uh, let's hope he keeps doing it. I mean, if he could see seven targets every week. There was something I saw while I was watching the, the recap of the game. I think it was uh, his past 33 targets. He's caught all of them. And then he scored like six touchdowns from his past 33 targets by Brady. Now he broke that streak this game, but yeah. Yeah. Super efficient guy. Yeah. He, he, and his snap count obviously increases with, with Antonio Brown gone. He was in 67% of snaps. He's, uh, he is to me, one of the wide receivers to own there. Gordon and Edelman, I like them both, but I think Dorsett's going to be the one that takes the top off, and Brady's a guy that can get him the ball. So I, I like I like it. I picked him up as soon as Brown went out in most leagues that I was in, but he's only owned around 20%, so he's still available almost everywhere. Yep. I mean, as, as you just said, take the top off. You look at week one, he had four targets and four receptions for 95 yards and two touchdowns. That's Brandon Cook's line right there. That's, yeah, that's Brandon Cook's. I mean, it's the dude can ball. He was a first-round pick for a reason. He was a first-round pick. He's only 26 years old. I'm buying him in Dynasty. I'm buying him in Redraft. I'm picking him up off of waivers. I have uh, out of a $100 budget, I'm spending $12 on him in one league because I'm stacked the receiver, but I want him on my bench just because I feel like he can be that 20-point a week, 15-point a week floor guy 15 points as being his floor and 20 point being you know his he catches a touchdown this week boom Absolutely. josh gordon is not bad by any means edelman is not bad by any means this offense is looking better than ever with a 57 year old quarterback <laughs> i mean uh, how about we talk about rex burkhead people yeah let's, is this let's guy get the rb1 that. for the Patriots let's get now? into that because it seems to me that sony <laughs> michelle is very game script dependent and he just i mean the touchdown but, saved him this week but the problem is it's not even game script because they were up big this game they tried to get him the ball a little bit but he in two out of the three games he's averaged one yard per carry yeah uh, he's been saved by touchdowns he's been he's been basically and i'm just gonna say it, he's been awful I've got him in a lot of places. I bought into the playoff hype from last year where they used him and he looked good, but man, he hasn't looked good at all this season. I mean, flat out bad, just bad this season. I mean, he's a guy, you know, week one, he, he did what he did, but he's a guy I think you have to give 15 carries a game to in order for him to be, you know, a decent, decent outing. And I'm a, I'm a Georgia guy. That's, you know, that's, my bread and butter is Sony Michelle, and Nick Chubb, Todd Gurley, no Sean Marino. I mean, you go back, it's I own the Georgia running backs. I own Sony everything where, but I feel like they're not giving him enough work. And whenever they give him a little work, he doesn't give them a reason to give him more work. Yeah. So until he has that game where it's like eight carries for 50 yards and a touchdown, and then they're like, okay, we could give him a little bit more work. I'm not owning any back in the backfield. I don't want James White. I don't want Sony. I if I picked up Rex, I'm holding him. If I didn't pick him up and somebody else owns him, I'm not trading for him because what is Rex going to be next week? You know, we we've seen this before, right? We've seen all this before. Th- these running backs we're talking about right now might not even be the RB one for the Patriots at the end of the year. It might be Damian freaking Harris. Yeah. Well, or or Brandon <laughs> Bolden who outsnapped right. Sony Michelle twenty-one to seventeen. It's just yeah. it, it's. Uh, you know, like I said, it, 
he seems to have talent. We all saw it last year. It just it's not not happening for him this year. Yep. Um, those are the guys on my list. Like buy sell. I, I don't know. Sony and, and James White are the two that I'm trying to either move off or I, I'm still kind of high on James White. I don't know. Maybe so what do you guys think about me. Watson? Watson? He comes back tight end. Oh, Benjamin Watson, uh, Watson coming back after a four game suspension. Mm. I don't think much changes, to be honest. I mean, they, you know, if something's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Going back to that, I mean, they're doing whatever they want on offense. Yeah. I mean, they're, and they played a, a pretty decent Pittsburgh team. Uh, they played Miami, of course. Everybody shits on Miami. New York was an interdivision game that usually New York plays the Patriots a little tough. I mean, even going back to whenever we had Wild Rex Ryan there. I mean, I just, I don't know. I think the Patriots are just being the freaking Patriots. And it's just, it stresses me out. I don't like it. What I do want is that Patriots are defense if my league has the defense, though. I mean, they're they're pretty damn good, right? Yeah, very good. Uh, quick, quick show break here. Taylor Gabriel scored his third touchdown already in Monday Night Football. and Which helps oh almost gosh. nobody. We're not nobody. even out of the first half yet, so there you go. Yeah, that helps. That helps just about nobody. I have him in a dynasty league, but who would start him? Yeah, exactly. right. He has thirty points. Yeah, Lord damn. Jesus. David Montgomery continues to be a disappointment. All right. I mean, we're going to talk about. We're going to definitely talk about the Bears on the Mail Sack Wednesday. So if you haven't ever heard the Mail Sack, it's a live advice show. We do start, sit, trade, right. waiver stuff. We're on Wednesday at eight p.m. Uh, you can find us. Call us. We have a phone line and all that stuff. So we'll definitely talk about the Bears and Redskins game. And then, of course, on Thursday, too. Uh, let's talk about the Chiefs, Mahomes. I don't really need to say much. He's good. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the wide receiver situation, to me, it's Hardman and Robinson. You almost have to start them. Well, Hill's out. I'm a little bit faded on Watkins, but I think you have to start. You kind of have to start everybody on the Chiefs. Um, now is the time if you're buying, you can buy Hill, I think, because these guys are kind of making you forget Tyreek Hill was even on the team. The running back situation. Give me some clarity on this. Darrell Williams, Darwin Thompson. What the hell trash, do I do? Trash. All trash? Seriously? I just think it's the it's Andy Reid, dude. Andy Reid just he can make a leaf look like a tree. I mean, <laughs> okay. This this guy is a magician. I mean, we've <laughs> seen it. We've seen it so many years, year after year after year after year. I like Lashawn McCoy. I like him here. I think he can have a – I mean, Reed loves him, let's be honest. And LaShawn's already the – he's like a RB2, I think, right now. I think he's top 20. If he can be just used like this and just be hyper-efficient in his usage, where he's getting 6.8 yards per carry, 8.1 yards per carry, he's getting about 9 yards per catch. If he can just be hyper-efficient with his touches and score you a touchdown per week, I'm I'm all about it. Darrell Williams is just uh I mean I don't even I don't even want to waste my breath speaking on him. All right. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy him. I wouldn't he's like what everybody wanted Damian Williams to be, but right, those but, of us who knew about Damian Williams and, and knew and he nobody was, and nobody rostered this guy. He's not on anybody's team right now. He's gonna be looked at on waivers this week. You're saying stay away. Right. Stay away. It's a trap. I mean, All right. I didn't believe in Damian Williams. I'm so the not... only reason the only reason I think you pick him up is because it looks like McCoy likely can't stay healthy. So uh, I want Williams on my team for when McCoy is not healthy. You know what I mean? Like, it, so, right. so I'm not. Uh, I will take a shot on my last rush on my last spot on my bench on a Daryl Williams versus some other handcuff because. When McCoy does get hurt, he's he re-aggravated his ankle. This guy will come in, and he actually looked good playing for that team. So I, I like the idea of picking him up as a stash. Um, so it would be Darrell, it would be Daryl Williams over Darwin Thompson then for you if you had to stash somebody on the end of your bench. Yeah, that's well, what I mean, I'm about to touch on. <laughs> well, it, it, yeah, I mean it, it's been Daryl Williams over Darwin Thompson so far this season. I don't know. Unless they find a reason for that to change. I mean, I, I hate – I know there's going to be people that listen to this show that are Darwin Thompson fans and all that, but I hate to burst your bubble. The dude just flat out sucks, and I'm sorry. 
Wow. Okay. Because who's I'm like, really sorry. Who's, this dude who's likes him long term? Who said by the end of the year he's going to be that, be that backfield? I've seen tree sap fall faster than Darwin <laughs> Thompson moves. Okay. This guy is just not good. I mean, he's not. I just don't understand. There's a reason why he was picked almost in the seventh round. This guy is just dookie. He is junk coming at me with this Darwin Thompson nonsense. People, I, hear, I see you on Twitter. I unfollow people who talk about Darwin Thompson. I block you. <laughs> so I what's that trash? What's odd to me, and, and listen, I, everybody has their opinions, and I hope I hope for your sake you're right, and I hope for my sake I'm right, but – Man, it's hard for me to hear, even if the talent level is is uh, skewed just a little bit. Like, I take Daryl Williams on the Chiefs over Wayne Gallman starting for the Giants any day of the week. I get, like, he's a starter and he has opportunity. I get it. But, man, that's that's a trash team. It is a trash team. That, and that's – that's the, the and that's the issue for me on Gallman versus say Daryl Williams is when Daryl Williams gets in there he's on the field with the best offensive players, so his any snap that he takes is way more value than valuable than any snap that Wayne Gallman takes. I I just can't get. I don't know. I, just, I know what you're. I know what you're saying. Like it, I'm not saying these guys are super talented. Look, McCoy looked like trash last year on a bad team, and he looks good on on the Chiefs, but. You know, at some point, it's not about the talent; it's about the team he's on. I don't right. care if he—I don't care if he's hyper talented. I just care if he scores points. So, man, I don't know Wayne Gallman. I'm telling you, this guy is—he has it. Just I'm comparing the two. Wayne Gallman's like six two fifteen. Okay, Daryl Williams is six foot two twenty ish, two twenty five, something around there. They're both about the same age, but Gallman was drafted in the fourth round because of what he did at Clemson. Darrell Williams was not drafted at all, if I'm not mistaken. Darrell Williams was horrible in college. I think uh, – wasn't he a – he was a fullback in college. Uh, I don't watch I don't watch college much. If, if they're good enough, they'll make it to Sunday. <laughs> you're right. You're right. But my point is being Darrell Williams is just – I think this was just a flash in the, play, in the pan. And – LaShawn McCoy, Darrell Williams has his value right now hanging in the balance by the threat of hope. He's on his knees at night praying that McCoy and Williams and whoever else is hurt there stays hurt. All right. I think if they're healthy, I mean, he's – I don't think he's anything. That's just my personal opinion. I, I'm i on record last year on some shows – Talking about how trash Daryl Williams is, and and college fans don't at me. I was just joking. <laughs> of course, I watch college football. I want to see who's going to make it to the pros. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I, I don't. That's. I, I just. I don't I just care have... about your favorite team that you you claim that you never went there. They're not your team. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> guy in Florida thinking the Ohio State's the his team. You've never been to Ohio State's yeah. campus. Give it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that. Sorry, I hear that all the time living where I live. Um, let's <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> let's move on to the Raiders. Uh, Draft Genius, this is your team, so I'm going to kind of let you go with this one. They didn't look really good this week again. I think J- I think Josh Jacobs was still injured. I- I'm not sure why they even played him. I thought they should have given him a rest. But um, break down the Raiders and, like, you know, who you add and who you drop and who you sell and who you buying for for your team. Uh, I mean, Derek Carr, I'm just going to touch it in positional basis. Derek Carr is still being kind of efficient with his throws. You know, he completed 27 out of 34 passes. I mean, you only have one threat in the receiving column with Tyrell Williams. You only have one threat at tight end with Darren Waller. Darren Waller is a dog. I mean, this dude, give me Darren Waller over uh, every tight end in the NFL but three of them. Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey, and Evan Ingram. Yeah, so that's that's Darren Waller over Ertz. That's Darren Waller over Kittle. Give me Darren freaking Waller. That's who I want from this Raiders team. Tyrell Williams is eh. He just showed his true colors, really. He played tough matchup, couldn't separate that well in coverage, 
cut all three of his targets, but we saw what he did. Jalen Richard should have got used way more. Uh, Gruden continues to be a disappointment and the reason why I cry myself to sleep most nights. But hey, we got eight more years of him, seven more years of him, because we owe him $70 million or some crazy shit like that. I mean, come on, really? Josh so Ty- Jacobs. Sorry, Tyrell Williams came in with a hit pointer, though, right? Maybe that yeah. led to him not being able to separate. Right, but this is what I, I thought he w- would be from the beginning. I mean, you look at, yeah, he, he had a little hip injury, but I don't think that that, I mean, just watching him play, it just he just struggled against a little bit of press whenever he was pressed, struggled whenever making contact on his routes. He just showed why I don't think he's a wide receiver one. He's a solid wide receiver two. I mean, yeah. solid. But I don't think he's a wide receiver one. That's why we're going to get Jerry Judy in the draft and go baby go. But Josh Jacobs, going back to him, I mean, the game script was never in his favor. Yeah. Right? The Vikings just – I just, I don't know. I just, uh, Vikings are just better than the Raiders right now. At this point in time, Josh Jacobs needs a good game script because we know that Gruden's just going to be weird and throw in, um, you know, whatever his name. He might pull Marshawn Lynch off the streets in week six (laughs) and and dress him out at running back and split carries. I don't know what the hell this dude's going to do. But Jacobs only saw 10 attempts. He saw two targets. I mean, go buy Josh Jacobs, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Buy Josh go Jacobs. Buy I'm actually selling Williams on the fact that he scored three weeks in a row. Like, hey, guess right. what? This guy's scoring touchdowns. Right. Here, here he is. Like, he's, he's not doing great, but, yeah, he's trade bait for me. And his he's, yards per catch is amazing. I mean, his yards per catch is almost 10 yards per catch, like, all year. Yeah. He's That's a nice, like, easy sell. He's right. a nice, easy sell. All, he, all you have to say is he's the only other target there besides Waller. Yeah. He's the – like – it's a nice compact offense. George George taught me that phrase, nice compact offense. There's only three guys <laughs> there you worry about. I don't know that that's a great thing for a football team, but it's pretty good for fantasy. You know which guys are valuable. They're the only ones that are going to get targets. There's not going to be a lot of vultures. Um, hey, so some quick Darren Waller stats. Look, we all know he's good. He's the second in the league in receptions. Ooh. Uh, 26 on 29 targets. Ooh. Fifth, fifth in the league in yards after catch, only behind Eckler, Kamara, Bell, and Watkins. Oh, oh my goodness! Seventh in the league in first down conversions, leads all tight ends in snap count percentage, and only tight end to lead his team in targets in every game so far. At the dudes, I mean, he's he's uh, to me right now, he's the tight end one. Uh, but just with all that, like he's the tight end one. And look, I love Kelsey, but Kelsey hasn't scored yet this year. Yep. So until that changes. I think Draft Genius needs a cold shower. You got them all worked up over oh, there. Oh, dude, you just gave me <laughs> you just gave me like a shot in the spine of euphoria. <laughs> just I don't even I don't know. I got to stop talking about the Raiders. All right. And Darren freaking Waller. All I have to say is don't pick up JJ Nelson. If you do, I'm gonna slap the shit out of you because yeah. you're ridiculous. Yeah. If Hunter Renfro would get the targets that Cole Beasley gets, he'd be better than Cole Beasley. Agreed. agreed. Okay. He's shown a little bit, but yeah. Two, two, and they don't add him just yet. <laughs> Jaguars, let's move on to them. Mishnu actually looked decent for the for the entire game, uh, which is more than I've seen from him lately. He's getting all kind of social media and television appearances. I think he's a hipster doofus. They had a lot of penalties in this game. Uh, the Jags honestly didn't play all that great, but are you going to start Mishnu now? Like, I mean... If we look at the team as a whole, there's it's kind of middling. Like I want to say they're kind of middling. DJ Chark is like the only I'm sorry, DJ Chark do 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 is the only guy that anyone's like high on. Westbrook I'm low on him. You're low on him. I kinda am too. Like I feel like it's the Keelan Cole thing from two years ago. DJ Chark is hashtag overrated. I mean, this guy he went to LSU, he was okay. Not really. He kind of sucked, but I don't want to kind of <laughs> like be mean. He was a second round pick for a reason, obviously. You know, NFL coaches know more than me. Uh, he runs a four three. He's pretty damn fast, which is That's good. Which he, is good for Mishnu because I don't think he's not really pushing it down the field right. a lot. So and he, the, he needs the that. dude's not even two hundred pounds though. That's the problem. You see, yeah. I don't like those receivers. He's six three. 190-something. He's like a string bean, bro. He's not good. DD continues to just underwhelm me. 
thought this was going to be Didi's breakout year. Uh, week one with Foles, he did pretty damn good. But besides that, he's been eh, okay. Chris Conley, I was talking to people, messaging people on Twitter, sell him after week one. He did the same stuff with the Chiefs. Yep. Yep. I mean, this is just not an offense I want any part of. Gardner Minshew has the swag. Okay, he is everything Baker Mayfield wants to be and more. <laughs> yeah, so DJ Chark, to me, if he was on a better offense, it'd be fine. The problem is he's doing it on a bad offense, and, you know, it, it's going to come due one week where he, he's not great, and then it'll happen multiple times. Um, you know, the, playing the Broncos, playing the Saints in a couple weeks, that those aren't great matchups for him. That's going to be his problem. Minshew... He looked okay, but again, when you've got when you're throwing it to Westbrook, who's dropping it three times, and and one in the end zone, which really killed him, and you're throwing to Chris Conley, and you're throwing to DJ Chark, and that's the guy you're you're touting as your number one. It's you know on a better offense, he'd be he'd be good. He looks accurate. He looks poised. He doesn't look like the game's overwhelming him. You're right. He looks like a hipster doofus, um, but. He'd be okay if the rest of the team was good, but they're yeah. not. So he's yeah. not going to be a guy you want to start. I, well, their defense did play well against the Titans, I guess. And I, I don't know, Fournette's still kind of interesting to me. I mean, he's getting a consistent rushing workload. He's getting used in the passing game. He hasn't scored yet, but I think that's coming. But again, like if I'm trying to buy anybody from this team, it's Fournette. And if I'm trying to drop anybody, uh, I'm afraid it's Westbrook from right now. West, Westbrook. Right now, I'm not investing in any of these wide receivers. I'm trying to stay away. Uh, the Texans, let's look at them. The Watson, Deshaun Watson looked a lot better than he did last week. I think still he may have been a little banged up last week, but he looked good. And I can officially say he loves his multiple tight ends because both Jordan Atkins and Darren Fells got into the action with touchdowns. Can you buy into this tight end usage? I say no. If you had to add one, are you adding either of these guys, Atkins or Fells? No, I'm not using. I'm not buying into either one of them. Same. I can't. Yeah, the, yeah. It's just a one week fluke to me. Yep. 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 Um, wide receiver wise, it looks like Kenny Stills has kind of pushed K- Kiki Cutie out of the the situation. So for me, um, I'm actually ready to drop Duke Johnson and Kiki Cutie until further notice. I can't. I can't start either of those guys with any confidence at all. I'm holding on to Duke Johnson just because of. Carlos Hyde's injury history, right? Carlos Hyde uh, just completely sucked in this game, if I'm being honest and blunt. He had 10 carries for 19 yards. Give me a break. He had a touchdown. Give me a break. Duke Johnson, however. Duke Johnson is the man with the plan, baby, because he can work in the passing game and in the run game if they would just feature him. Cut Carlos Hyde. Just feature Duke Johnson. Look at week one. I mean, the dude went nine attempts for 57 yards on the ground, okay? That's like six yards per carry. But then receiving-wise, he had four receptions for 33, giving you a nice little 13-point game. Flex him all day. If that's his usage every week. Right now, I'm holding him because the way I look at it in redraft is would I be okay with somebody else picking this guy up and using him against me because I know what he's capable of. I think the problem for me with Duke is that, like, we all know what he's capable of, but we haven't seen him do it. He didn't do it in Cleveland, even though he everybody thought he was the better back. And he's not doing it here, even though Hyde has bounced around four teams in the last two years. Hyde comes in and he looks very Lamar Miller-like. We talked about it last week. He's he's now Carlos Miller. And, uh, <laughs> and so, like, he... It's just tough because he comes up and he plays behind guys that everybody assumes he's better than, and then he gets on these teams and nobody is using him like he's better than those guys. And if they're maybe they're seeing something we're not, maybe they're just bad coaches. I don't know. But until I can see Duke Johnson take a role from somebody, I, I just can't use him that way. And you know, this team is not somebody who throws – is not a team that throws to the backs historically. And, you know, week one was a bit of an aberration for – he, like you said, Duke Johnson caught four passes for 33 yards. But then we haven't seen it since. And 
And I don't know if that's just because that's not them and that's not who uh, Deshaun yeah. Watson is. He's likely going to run instead of try and dump it off to somebody like Duke Johnson. I'm going to answer that question for you. It's bad coaching. Bill O'Brien yes. frustrates me week to week to week for years now. It is bad coaching. So if you're dropping anybody, I think Duke Johnson's passable at this point. Cootie, definitely I think you can drop him. Draft Genius likes to hang on to him. Um, I might I might still want to buy some Fuller. He hasn't scored yet, but still being used pretty well. And Kenny, How much you go buy Hopkins? That's what I'm talking about. You want to buy that? Hopkins? Who's selling Hopkins, though? Somebody's well, panicking because he put up 10 and 14 in two weeks and yeah, no touchdowns. Maybe. He had 40 yards against Jacksonville. 60 this past week or something like that. I mean, he had a two touchdown performance week one, but everybody's going to say, oh, that was the Saints. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Saints I, always have high scoring games. I'm not selling Hopkins. I wouldn't sell Hopkins. I If you can find somebody that's selling him, absolutely buy him. But um, I don't think many people will. So I have a league where I have Darren Waller and Zach Ertz. If I offer you Zach Ertz right now and your tight end is one of these Houston tight ends, that's who you started. <laughs> I mean, are, aren't you going to consider Zach Ertz for DeAndre Hopkins? No, I wouldn't. Absolutely. There'd have to be pieces in there with it, but yeah, I would. Very good base right there, though. I mean, if you think of, he's more attainable now than he's been in right. years. Sure. Him and Devontae I guess... Adams. Him yeah. and Devontae Adams yeah. is just yeah. Now is the buy window. We just saw Mike Evans' buy window close, so we have to buy whenever we can. That's true. Yeah, and shit. I mean, Keenan Allen, Keen Allen had a, a ridiculous week. So if you're feeling really good about Hopkins or Adams, that might be a small upgrade if you can move them. I don't know if I'd want to trade Keenan Allen, but it's a possibility. Um, let, let's go to the Eagles now. A lot of injuries coming in this game, still banged up. Uh, they were really hurting on the defense as well. Rel- w- Wentz, rather, didn't have a lot of reliable weapons, so those have to get healthy. Obviously, everybody was talking about Aguilar last week. He proved to be the correct pickup. Um not a lot of yardage, but got two touchdowns. Max Ho- Mac Hollins, also pretty decent for PPR. Uh, to me, let's talk about Sanders. This was kind of, a lot of people thought this was going to be the breakout game. Got 13 carries, got used in the receiving game, but two fumbles, ball security, an issue. I'm okay going forward, though. I think this guy's going to progress slowly. Um, do you like what you see of Sanders, and would you start starting him now? Because I don't think you were starting him before i love him i love him he was my rb1 in dynasty this uh offseason as a rookie i mean he's he's the guy he saquon barkley said it himself he said this guy has the potential to be better than me i mean this is the guy he's gonna be the best running back of next year's class he said that last year and i mean he is the best running back of this class he's just not getting the usage that we know he should get because it's the freaking Eagles, yeah, and they're giving Jordan Howard eleven carries. Oh my gosh! Stop! This guy just—he's not good at football. Jordan Howard, I'm sorry. Go to the Buccaneers. Oh, there you go. Miles Sanders, he has it coming. It's coming. Yep. It's on the horizon. He—he's pulling up the boat right now. He sees the fish swimming. He's about to—he's <laughs> about to get his net in and catch about. 200 of them fish right but he just he, he's approaching it you know slow and steady wins the race he can't go fast he's gonna scare all the fish away he has to go slow and once he gets there everybody's gonna eat this team's gonna be better on and off the field fantasy wise this team's gonna be better i mean it, it's just takes good things take time yep. nick chubb last year took time yep. this is the nick chubb of this year Mark my words. All right. He's the Nick Chubb of this year. He will finish top 15. Buy him now while you can. Sell it on the fact that it's a short week turnaround. A lot of injuries. They're playing a good defense in the Packers on Thursday. You can get Sanders. You can buy him now. That's the play. Hell, if you have Aguilar and somebody has Sanders, do that. Trade Aguilar for Sanders. Do it now. And I think, yeah, I think Aguilar is a sell. Uh, he's only valuable until. Jackson and uh, and uh, Jeffries come back. Like poor so. Aguilar can't catch the flu, man. <laughs> did you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> did you it's, see the? It uh... is bad. It's it's bad. You know, but you know, at the end of the game, he has a decent stat line. He's good yeah. for fantasy. He's just yeah. not great for the NFL. Right. Right. <laughs> 
Um, th- not not a lot to talk about the Eagles. I mean, we'll see how they do Thursday. So that'll be that'll be a topic, I'm sure, for the uh, Blitz. Uh, let's talk about the Falcons real quick. Injuries are still piling up for them. Uh, Matt Ryan's fine. Hooper had a big game, but he's been pretty stable. Uh, Calvin Ridley fell off a cliff, so maybe somebody's panicking on Calvin Ridley, although I don't know if you're going to be able to buy him. But the running back situation, and we've been talking about Freeman for a couple weeks now. Who says he's Doug Martin? I say now is the time to sell if you haven't sold already. I don't think his value is going to get any higher. Uh, I'm curious to what you guys feel about Devonta Freeman going forward here. I'm a big sell Devontae Freeman, and like you said, his value is not going to be much higher. He There's spots where he looks okay. When he gets an open space, he looks pretty good, but he's going down with a warm breeze. <laughs> I, that That's basically it. He's, the he analogies today are on fire. I love the analogies. <laughs> so he – a, a good stiff breeze pushes that guy over now, and and I don't I don't know. He used to run with anger, and he doesn't do that anymore. So I'm selling him. Yeah, I'm holding him for one more week because uh, you have a guy by the name of Ito Smith who is in concussion protocol. So uh, I, I feel like he might get that same exact workload, and he has. I want to say. Uh, I'm blanking on who he has next week. It's Titans. Is it Miami Titans? Uh, Titans yeah. Remember the uniforms. Remember so the Titans. Remember the Titans exactly. One guy that I'm not buying is Calvin Ridley because Calvin Ridley just I'm not a fan. Um, that's all I'm gonna say on that. One guy I am selling. Now this is gonna take people by shock. One guy I'm selling is Austin Hooper. Wow, because he had a two touchdown performance. Yep which is the two touchdowns he should have had the two weeks before this. I see his floor being about – I see him being about a 12 to 15-point guy per week. Yeah. I feel like you can get another tight end and a useful piece if you sell Austin Hooper after a 28-point performance. All right. this No, this is – I want to get into this real quick because I, I think there's some tight end targets you could get. Who would you target tight end-wise? And don't say Darren Waller because he's – I think he's going to be expensive. <laughs> you, but okay. would you go after, like, Kittle? Would you go after, like, Delaney Walker? Who would you go after? Would you go after Mark Andrews, the number two tight end right now? But he just had a three-point week or whatever. You think you could get him for Hooper? I think it, Hooper and uh, – shit, I'll trade you Hooper. And I will give you – let's see. I'll give you Hooper and Nelson Aguilar for Mark Andrews. Okay. All right. I don't play games. I don't play games. Go for the throat. <laughs> I, I hear you. All right. So I want I want to go back to Ridley though. So Ridley Ooh. had a bad game, but this game uh, he faced zone a lot, and he typically plays bad games against zone defenses and looks better against man to man. I think. I mean, if anything, that gives you something most fantasy players don't have is a a, a it's like a, a guidebook on start sit for that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he, so some of the like Sanu played a real good game because he's a veteran. He knows what where to sit in zones and get open. And I don't think Ridley has that yet. He relies purely on his his physical talent at this point. And I think Ridley will gain that in time. But I think he'll go back to playing teams to play man to man, and he's going to be okay. Yeah, I still want to buy Ridley just because the running game doesn't look very good, and I think they're just going to keep passing the game. Are passing to to play. So, um, like I said, I'm selling Freeman. I uh, I see what you say about hanging to him for a week, but I, I'm all in on the passing game for this this team uh, for the most so, part. So, a couple of weird Matt Ryan stats: uh, four it. picks and six targets to Luke Stocker. Like you have good weapons. Why are you throwing it to Luke Stocker? <laughs> and and twenty three percent of Matt Ryan's points have come on the last play of each game. All right, he's Mister yeah, Clutch. It's... Wow. All touchdowns. Every every drive at the end of the game for him has been a touchdown at the end of the game, and and that's twenty three point percent of his his point total. Hey, that's really good for prop betting. Not so great for fantasy uh, consistency, I guess. But what do you one mean? thing that is very encouraging is they stuck with Devontae Freeman the whole time. They gave Kenyon Barber one carry. Devontae Freeman had all the carries. I mean that that's very encouraging to show that they are. Relying on him, even if he's disappointing, they are featuring him just like they said they would. They said they would do this, and he's gotten, I mean, the lion's share of the workload so far. That's the only really encouraging part. <laughs> I love it. Again. 
Uh, the Cowboys, let's talk about them. They looked bad before halftime. They made adjustments. They came out. I have a feeling they didn't take Miami seriously. Uh, Witten continues to be decent for PPR. Randall Cobb, to me, is the waiver ad this week while Gallup misses time. Only saw four targets, but had seen five and six the previous week, and he had a big uh, 74-yard touchdown callback on penalty. Uh, other people were talking up Devin Smith, too, so... I don't know if there's anyone you really want to sell on this team. You kind of got to keep everybody that's playing on a good team. Um, how do you feel about Cobb if he's available, adding him? I'm indifferent. Yeah. I'm indifferent. I am, uh, I'm selling Cooper, to be honest with you. Yeah. Because if you look at that schedule in the playoff time, Chicago and the Rams right in the first two weeks of playoffs. I mean, why not sell him and get a Hopkins? Yeah. Right. You want to talk about bad luck? I helped a friend of mine trade Cooper. Uh, we traded Cooper and Dak and got Saquon Barkley back. <laughs> you did it. And and it literally it just the the day before the game. And and every, you know, I was real happy about that trade right up until the game. I mean, all Dak's but, doing is making Cooper look better. That's it. And Cooper's I love Cooper. You know, once a raider always a raider, baby. That's how it goes. But Cooper is just – he – I don't think he'll finish in the top five. He's been sitting in the top five this whole year. Sell him for Hopkins, the best wide receiver in football. But that's what I'm saying. That's that's why I wanted to bring that up is there are people that are looking at Cooper and, and drooling over it. And, and he may continue. I mean, that team looks good. But like you said, tough schedule going forward, tough schedule in the playoffs. Uh, sell him high when, when you get it. Sell him for Saquon. It. Right, exactly. And change, and change. There you go. Because right now, somebody's going to say, well, I can't use Saquon for four to eight weeks. Sell him for Saquon and get a good receiver with him. Yeah. You, and you, then wow. you're just like, okay, I'm I'm it. If I'm you could the, get yeah, I'm the guy. <laughs> get, get the team that has Saquon and Tyreek Hill and get rid of Cooper and, <laughs> and somebody else, and you'd be, you'd be good to go. Just wait a little while. You just got to have patience, but you got to have a decent record to do that as well. Yeah, you got to make it to the playoffs. Yeah, so. that's the point. Yeah, exactly. Um. Any other ad? I mean, Pollard, you know, relief time, uh, very much like Madison. I don't think you can put too much into this because it was garbage time. Uh, so don't don't go running out there putting a huge waiver claim in for Pollard. Um, let's look at the Rams. Goff was still looking a little off. Fantasy usable still. The team around him is really good. You're starting all your wide receivers. Let's talk about Gurley. Not scoring any touchdowns. Not scoring a lot of touchdowns. Um, and very little use in the passing game. His his rushing usage has been pretty stable in terms of carries. Uh, efficiency went down a little bit this week. Are you selling or are you buying? I've, I've heard people on both sides of the fence. So I want to know for sure. Selling or buying, Todd Gurley? I mean, I'm always buying top five talents. I like it. I mean, if, if we're being honest, I'm always buying top five talents. Yeah, he is getting used less, but isn't? Sean McVay doing exactly what he said he'd do. Yeah, he is. Keeping him, isn't he keeping him ready for the playoffs? Yep. Keeping him ready for the last, whenever it gets cold outside, that's kind of what he's doing. Moderation, baby. Everything is good in moderation. Gar- Gurley is just a, he's just a good buy right now. I mean, he's sitting at the 20th best running back or something like that. I'm probably wrong. It's probably worse than that. If it is worse than that, then what are you doing listening to this? Pause it and go buy him right now. <laughs> because, I mean, that that's a top five talent, and he does not carry a top five price. I have seen it. I saw him go last week for Derrick Henry and somebody else. Oof. I mean, I'll take it. I'll take I'm, that too. I yeah. still – I still think Derrick Henry – Derrick Henry is good. Don't don't get me wrong. Titans fans, y'all are a different breed. Y'all hate on people. You can hate on me, whatever. But Todd Gurley is more talented than Derrick Henry. Jared Goff sucks whenever he plays away. He is one of the worst away quarterbacks in the NFL. So I didn't start him. I started Kyler Murray over him, and that paid off dividends. That's something you can use uh, in your start and sits in the future. If Todd Gurley goes down, be sure you own Malcolm Brown. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I, and I want to talk about Henderson real quick because he's almost droppable. I, I thought he would get some more of that relief rule, but he's just not being used yet. So if you were holding on to Henderson, I drafted him kind of – I mean, I did draft him in some leagues, um, not too early. But at this point, I just don't see any usage coming out of him yet. So I'm kind of moving him on for some space. Um, Woods is another guy I'd buy low. Woods is a guy that I'd buy low with with two receptions and three receptions the last two weeks, and the yardage is down. 
he's still a guy that's going to be involved in that offense. And Cooks is a guy I would sell high. Yep. Cooks is a guy I would sell high. The only one I'm holding on to is Cooper freaking Cup, the best white wide receiver in the NFL today. Cooper mm-hmm. freaking Cup is just a phenom, man. That dude. No one thought he would come this quick back from the injury he had. But the dude is balling. The dude is balling. People were talking about don't draft Cooper Cup. Don't, you know, you, you don't want Cooper Cup for this. You don't want blah, blah, blah. He's coming off an injury. He's going to be slow to start the season. Dude, if you thought he was slow to start the season, you can just, I'm bending over right now. Start kissing. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Cooper Cup, this guy is a wide receiver one every week, right? You're, you're not uncomfortable starting him ever. Nope. It doesn't matter if he's playing uh, Nam Diasamoa, you know, at cornerback. It doesn't matter if he's facing a Hall of Fame caliber cornerback. This guy gets it done every week. All the Rams tight ends suck. That's all I have to say. Yep, yep. They're gonna and they got a pretty nice little schedule coming up here. Uh, moving on to the Saints. Teddy was okay. This is another one of those filling quarterbacks. We got to chat about real quick. To me, he was a game manager, which I th- kind of thought he was going to be. Um, had two kind of costly mistakes, uh, threw an interception, overshot Josh Hill, but they dropped the ball also. They dropped a pick six from Bridgewater. People were rumbling on the internet. Is it Taysom Hill time? You got to find some solace that Kamara and Michael Thomas were fine. Speaking on Kamara, I mean, I don't think this is sustainable every week with Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. I don't think it's sustainable every week with Breeze at quarterback either. I'm very, very shocked being a resident Saints fan, living in New Orleans. I mean, living in Louisiana. Uh, we'll just cut that out. Um, <laughs> living in Louisiana, you know, all my life. And uh, love the Saints, right? Love my Saints. I was so scared with Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback facing a team like the Seahawks, who are no joke. I mean, uh, Bridgewater did okay. He did what he could do, and that's all we needed to win. Michael Thomas still had a good game. Kamara still had a good game. As as Superwire Steve said, teams rely on their best players. That's what we did. We still see Jared Cook disappoint. We still see Latavius Murray disappoint. Trey Quan Smith, baby, come on, don't disappoint. Yeah, come back to yeah. me. We need a, we need some we need some action from him. I'm dropping Jared Cook to be honest. He's just not doing it for me. And if I'm hurting, if I'm hurting in record at least right now, like if I'm not in a winning record after this week, I may need to make a change at tight end. That's the guy I'm looking at getting rid of. So would you hold Latavius Murray in, you know, seeing that Kamara's seeing so many snaps, would you hold Latavius Murray in case Kamara gets injured? as a backup? Because I see Latavius Murray being one of the top three most valuable backups. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He's a but he's not getting used at all right now. No, that's well, fine. I'm, I'm talking about Cook. I'm dropping Jared Cook. Right, right, right. But, I'm, no, I'm, Murray, I'm, I'm holding. holding, I'm yeah. holding Murray too because it's not like Breeze is out for the season. No. So, you know, it goes back. Latavius Murray has a role in this offense. When when Breeze comes back, the offense is playing right, and there's there's more goal line carries. Like Latavius Murray is going to have a role at the end of the season, so he's a guy you got to hold. Yep. And Cook is absolutely a guy you got to drop. Got to. Got to. Maybe add Taysom Hill if you're in a deep league. I don't know if he's going to play, if he's going to get the nod. I said last week I think Bridgewater's got a short leash with the Cowboys, Bucks, Jags, and Bears. That's three pretty good defenses and one pretty decent, okay, whatever, maybe sometimes good defense. So this could be rough sledding for Bridgewater coming up. Uh, We'll see. We'll see. The Panthers – Obviously, uh, you're going to be talking about Kyle Allen, another one of those replacement quarterbacks. He looked good. He ripped up a bad secondary. People are going to be adding him into quarterback leads, I'm sure. He had some ball security issues. We saw C-Mac get back to a full load. Uh, one of the tight ends, I guess, is going to be high on the waiver wire list is Greg Olson, just being used pretty consistently. Had a big game. Um, other than that on this team, I think I'm off Jarius Wright. I don't know what else to do with this team. I mean, you kind of – everybody you drafted is doing kind of what you expected for the most part, right? I mean, Greg Olson followed the targets 9-9-7. Nine, nine, and seven. Yeah. This dude, he's the tight end five, maybe? I mean, he's 
he's balling. And I never – this is a guy you could have picked up off of free agency week one. You know, like everybody was, everybody was drafting in the – you know, in the savvy redraft leagues, people were drafting Ian Thomas before Greg Olson. Like, what are you doing with your life, yeah. kid? What yeah, is, I have I have Olson just about everywhere because I I made the decision in most of my leagues to punt on tight end, <laughs> and I I did. I just I didn't take any this tight a good ends call this until year. until you know until it got to around eleven or twelve, and I'm looking at now I'm way too late, and I'm like, oh, as long as Olson's healthy and playing, I think he's going to get targeted. It's just, you know, at some point we know his injury might, you know, is probably going to come. So that's that's the only thing you worry about is having Olsen. But uh, he's he's looked old and slow, and he still gets the job done. Yep. Uh, DJ Moore had a down week, so, you know, I mean, in terms of targets, one of two, 52 and a touchdown. If you were going to buy anybody, he'd probably be the lowest cost to get. Uh, but other than that... I don't know. The targets, I, mean, I guess, the targets went down for the wide receivers in general in this week, but I think that was a symptom of just them going back to the run game. If I own Panthers players, I want Allen to stay at quarterback. Yeah. I don't want Cam coming back. Definitely. Because Allen is a better quarterback for this team right now for fantasy than Newton. I agree. That's just my opinion. He, I mean, he's he's young. He has nothing to lose. He has everything to gain. So he's going to take shots down the field. He's going to use his guys, Christian McCaffrey, Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore, Greg Olson. He's going to rely on Greg Olson, old faithful baby. Yep. He's going to do what he can do to win. So that's who I want to stay the quarterback. I agree. Uh, would you pick him up on waivers if you needed a quarterback, two-quarterback league or even a streamer? Uh, I got him for free last week. I mean, if we're if we're looking at the four guys that filled in this week, so we're looking right. at Daniel Jones, uh, Allen, Teddy, and Mason Rudolph, who we're about to get to in a minute. Who's your top a- waiver guy if they're all four available? Now you're making it hard on me. See, I I, I would say Daniel Jones is number one. Kyle Allen is number two. Kyle Allen went undrafted. You know, we go back to keep saying that draft capital, but it's for a reason. These GMs know what they're getting. So he went undrafted for a reason, but he did beat out Will Greer kind of for that backup job right now. So I, I don't know. I probably speculation. I, I never spend waiver priority on a quarterback. So if he's there after waivers run, I might get him. Yeah. And I think that's the play too, is somebody's going to take Daniel Jones with their waiver. Right. Somebody's going to go out and spend money on Daniel Jones, or somebody's going to use that waiver spot, and then when waivers run, then I go pick up Allen for free. Got it. Smart moves there. All right, Jason, it's your turn now. The Buccaneers coaching in the kicker lost this game for the Bucks, but you said you said off the air you felt sick, and we talked about buying Evans low couple weeks already now he balled out if you had him you felt good winston is usable again maybe oj howard continues to kind of be invisible um and we already talked about well a little earlier godwin being the buy low from this team um barber and rojo continue to confuse me uh, i don't know just talk about the bucks so i'm selling evans high yeah okay i mean you're buying low and now you're selling high I well, mean, he is their wide receiver, too. So, oh, no, but hear, hear me out here. He had a great game. You think maybe they're finally going to get into using him uh, next week against Tlaib. Then he sees Patrick Robinson. Then he sees Bradbury, who already shut him down. He's going to see Patrick Peterson in a couple weeks. Like, he's got bad matchups coming up, and that just leaves me to think that, you know, they're trying to talk Winston not to throw it into, into good coverage. Uh, and that it, that leads me to buying low on Chris Godwin, which is something that Draft Genius over there talked about earlier. I think Evans is a, a sell high, sell the 190 and three, say that he's back, and you go get somebody else, go get Hopkins or, or Adams, go get Godwin. Because over the next several weeks, Evans is going to see really tough cornerback ones, and Godwin's going to just, eat because of that you it's gonna think, be a lot like week one and two you don't think evans is a good enough player to ignore the matchup a little bit well so he he got eaten up by bradbury he always has trouble against the saints uh to physical enough to give him issues he is a good enough wide receiver but 
it's going to be hit and miss. And like I said, with, with the way Arians is trying to get Winston to avoid turnovers, which it's not working, but he's trying. <laughs> it's not working. Don't get me wrong, but he is trying to rein that in. And I think with, with the coaching, Hey, don't throw it in the good coverage. Yeah. Evans is about to see good coverage. I think, I think Evans is a good sell high candidate this week. All right. Uh, I mean, so as far as the game goes, uh, how do you give up a 28 to 10 halftime lead to a rookie quarterback with Saquon Barkley hurt uh, missing two extra points and a field goal? It's just inexcusable all the way around. They, they look at uh, Winston through the interception. They lost faith in him ran, I think 13 straight times. Um, the one or two passes they allowed him to throw were easy, but behind the line of scrimmage type passes. So when it came down to crunch time, they didn't trust Winston until they had to when they were losing and he had to throw the ball back up. But being up by three, being up by six, they didn't let Winston throw it at all. So how does it feel to you like, I guess, your wide receiver two having this good of a performance? You know, like... I just I don't know I don't know how that feels. The Raiders only have one wide receiver, and that's Tyrell Williams, <laughs> or I'm sorry, it's Darren Waller. But how does it feel as a Bucks fan having your wide receiver two finally come to play? Oh, it's great. I mean, I think he's probably got more yards than Godwin by now. But uh, listen, it's <laughs> it's a good game. it's a good problem. <laughs> it's a good problem to have, right? To have two good wide receivers. Like I Dude, said, it's just. Yeah. You if, cannot imagine how much I despise Mike Evans. It's just I, I just think he's a fraud just because he's a a target hog that he's a compiler. You know, he just compiles a lot of targets and isn't really super efficient with them. To where I, I just I don't know. Chris Godwin is efficient with his targets in my so, eyes. So I it, Chris Godwin's a better route runner. He's better after the catch. Um, Evans is the guy that's going to go up and get the 50, 50 balls every time. So, uh, you know, two different styles, but it's nice to have both. Yep. And then they're not even using my boy Perryman. What a shame. Yeah. I, I want to warn people too. this running, this running back situation looks like a yo-yo you were on, like you might've been on Barber after last week. Now this week you're going to be on Rojo. I wouldn't trust either one, to be honest. You maybe add one, but I, I have a hard time starting either of those guys knowing who's going to get the majority of the work. You know, call me mean, but I want one of them, if not both, to get hurt and it to be the Agan Balwe show or whatever. Yeah, Dari had a lot of hype. Dari looks good out of the passing game. I mean, the dude needs an opportunity to shine. You're right. I mean, something's, something could happen, and I think – you know, in deeper leagues, Stash Dare, uh, star, Stash Dare Agun Bawale. Well, so as the only Buck fan, probably the only guy that watched this <laughs> game, uh, <laughs> the only talented running back on this roster is Rojo. The other two are just guys. And the only reason either one of them have any fantasy value is because the coach won't stick with a guy that's hot. Rojo was eating up five, six yards of carry at the end of the game. And then you put Peyton Barber in at third and two and he gets negative yards. It, it's sometimes coaches don't get out of their own way. Quick, quick. I want to just OJ Howard sell, buy, drop, or hold. What are we doing with OJ Howard? I'm holding. He's I'm arrived. Holding. We know he, what he is. We know what he is already. He missed, he missed a touchdown by about one foot. All right. If, if it was one foot shorter, he had a touchdown this game, and you're feeling a lot better about owning him. It's been by O.J. Howard for the past, well, now three weeks. So if you can still get him, the window's still open. The Titans allowed Marcus Mariota to be sacked nine times. He didn't play very well. Taylor Lewan comes back in a week, so hopefully that'll help things. Delaney and uh, Derek Henry are the only guys I trust starting right now. I am comfortable dropping Corey Davis and Deion Lewis. People are going to add Adam Humphreys. I think that's uh, kind of a mistake. And uh, A.J. Brown, who started off hot, has kind of fizzled out as well. Guys, stop me if I'm saying anything inaccurate here. No, it's, it'll be uh, it'll be Hannah, Tannehill time soon. <laughs> yeah, it might I, be. It's going to be Tannehill time soon, and I don't think that's much better for this offense, but it can't be much worse. Mariota's, I mean, he's running for his life. He's getting sacked nine times, but he's just not very good at football. Yeah. 
That's why you want Delaney Walker, and that's why you want A.J. Brown as well. A.J. Brown runs all the underneath routes. He's the best wide receiver on the team. Uh, he's just not getting used the right way. Delaney Walker also runs underneath. That's why he's getting, I mean, the most production. Yeah. Delaney Walker is a top 10 tight end right now. He's a tight end one. Who would have thought we're like reverse time three years ago, and now we have Witten and Olsen. And Walker has top 10 tight ends again. What is this? This is crazy. And then we have Derrick Henry, who is just balling, as we talked about. But he's balling on a bad team. Man. And, and Derrick Henry is somebody I'm selling. I sold him after week one. And I got Joe Mixon. And it didn't look too good for me till this week. So, I don't know. I'm selling all my Titans. I mean, that I don't I don't really own any Titans anymore. Yeah, I, sold I, all my yeah, Henry I, shares. I have A.J. Brown. I'm keeping AJ Brown. I'm keeping Delaney, yeah. and I'm selling. Yeah, I'm selling Henry as well if I can. Um, you know, he's going to keep doing what he does. But yeah, I'm trying to get rid of him. Let's move on quickly now to the Colts. Uh, we talked up Brissett a lot last week. We we think he's a a pretty good player for fantasy. Mac continues to be a must start. The Hilton injury caught a lot of people off guard, but uh, we'll see if he's okay. I feel like you can't trust the tight end in Indianapolis, but with Hilton, if he misses time. Maybe you do go back to the tight ends for a week. Or maybe you get Paris Campbell. Maybe you get Paris Campbell. Is he the guy you like? That's that's who I like the most. Uh, this is a guy who's going to be their wide receiver one in the future, I think. This guy, I mean, he, he can do it all. He can do – he can play X, Y, Z, F, H. You can, you can put him anywhere, any receiving spot. You can put him in the backfield. You could do anything with him. He can do it. He can make plays happen. Just got to feed him the rock, baby. That's it. All right. So, I mean, but you said for the future, and you're a dynasty guy, so I want to make sure we frame this for redraft. Is he going to be usable this year? Right, 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 right. Redraft, if Hilton misses time, I think Paris Campbell's the guy they drafted, you know, for them to have somebody after Hilton. Gotcha. So what makes you show your potential than being forced into an uncomfortable situation? I mean, Paris Campbell, we look at – if you are an NFL Combine fan, this guy tore up the Combine, which rose his draft stock from prediction of round five to the second round. He's 22 years old, 4'3", 40-yard dash. I mean, he's blazing fast. This guy is amongst the top 3% in speed in the NFL. This guy is just a baller. I mean, he is a baller. If you give me any rookie wide receiver, I'm picking Paris Campbell to win rookie of the year this year. And nothing says the way better than your wide receiver one on a team going down. It's not going to be Zach freaking Pascal, who I don't I guess he just got picked up this past week. I've never heard of this kid, Zach Pascal. Paris Campbell, Deion Kane are going to be the two wide receiver sets. Paris Campbell is going to be the wide receiver one. That's all I got to say. I mean, if Hilton is out. That's all you got to say? I don't think anyone has longer takes in this group than uh, than Hoos, but you. You are the only I mean, one to, to rival so Hussein. Hyped. I'm so <laughs> hyped for these rookies to like just finally come to fruition and Paris Campbell to just show the world the star that he is. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it short. I like Paris Campbell's opportunity. I do too. I don't, I'm not sure that uh, he's, he's going to be able to show out a lot of wide receivers don't show out at rookie and remember he was injured a lot of the off season. So he didn't have a lot of playing time in the preseason. So um, I like his opportunity, but I can quickly see it, it going to, to Dion Kane. I don't know about Pascal. I don't know who he is either. So I saw his name <laughs> and said who, but I, I just, I, listen, Brissett started the game 16 for 16 and two touchdowns. That's good enough. I, I like this team going forward. Sure. Sure. It's not Andrew Luck, but, uh, it's it's not yeah. as bad as we all thought. No, nope. Brissett is startable. Retired. Yeah, Brissett is startable for sure. Here we're on to Cincinnati. We're getting ready for Cincinnati. <laughs> all right, let's talk about the Bengals. The O line got exposed again against a tough uh, Bills defense. Now I'm going to kind of play devil's advocate. I don't necessarily believe this because I'm an owner of a lot of Tyler Boyd, a lot of Joe Mixon, uh, and some Joe, just some John Ross, and some AJ Green, but. Looking at this team as a whole, people are going to start to like panic and fire sale all the skill positions. Is that a mistake or is that something you would actually consider? Because you guys seem to be high on Mixon, 
even though he started off slow, and I wouldn't call this week a huge week because he did get a touchdown. But I, I don't know. Do you, do you trust this Bengals team to turn it around, or is this going to be garbage time only stats? If oh, someone's selling Mixon for less than top 10 price, I'm getting them. I mean, this is a top 10 talent at running back, and those don't come cheap. So if you're going to sell me Mixon, I'm taking them all day. Wide receivers, I don't want any of them. I don't want John Ross because John Ross is what he is. He's a boomer bust. Uh, Tyler Boyd, my dog, my man, sorry, but you will not have that many good weeks with Andy freaking Dalton at your quarterback. I just want Joe Mixon. I just I just want him. That's my guy. All right. Yeah, I do like Mixon just like like uh he said it's it's talent. And that's uh, I I look at John Ross and he's he's good but you know, he's going to have his weeks of drops. You look at Tyler Boyd who as a wide receiver one doesn't scare you. So until Green comes back, you know, he's facing number one cornerbacks and he's he's playing okay, but it's just okay. Yeah, he's so getting, nobody else yeah. there's no there's no star talent on this team besides Mixon, and I think that's why I'd buy him even though he's had down weeks. Right. I think uh I mean I've been starting Boyd in a PPR and that's been fine, but it hasn't been great. He's not winning me any games. He's not losing me any games, but he's not winning me any games. Uh people are gonna look at Auden Tate, six for eighty eight this week. Flash in the pan. I don't think you can do it. Um, I'm good dropping Uzuma and Bernard at this point if I need to add some people. Week four coming up. Uh, let's see. The 49ers are on by this week. We talked about Tim Coleman maybe coming back after the bye. Dante Pettis got a little action. Unfortunately, I dropped him in a lot of leagues just because I'd kind of given up hope. But maybe worth an ad if you've got a deep bench. Kittle is kind of the guy I want to talk about here because he is probably the guy you could buy do you believe in buying Kittle right now? Three weeks of sort of the same thing. I mean, eight eight catches for 54, three catches for 54, six catches for 57. I'm not a Kittle fan. I'd be lying if I said buy him. I'm not buying him. I'm just not a fan of him. Uh, I like Jeffrey Wilson, you know, uh, as a like Garrett Blunt type of running back where you kind of plug and play and hope he gets a touchdown. He's somebody you could get for free. Um, I'm getting Debo Samuel because people were probably going to drop him on their bye week just to pick somebody else up. Debo Samuel is the best wide receiver there. That's all. That's all really I got on 49ers. They're a boring team, and yeah. my take is boring on them. <laughs> all right. Yeah, and I don't. I don't think I. So Kittle gets open, but they're not scheming for him like for him like they did last year. They've got other weapons this year, so he's not getting he's not getting crazy target numbers. So you know. Again, I was a late round tight end guy, but I've I've been getting good numbers, better numbers than Kittle out of some of my late tight, round tight ends. So I don't see a reason to go out and buy him. I agree. Uh, the Seahawks. Let's talk about their running game and what to make of it. Coach says we believe in Carson. To me, that means he's lost his job because I always go with the opposite of what of what. Uh, God damn it! What's his name? Why did I just blank on his name? Uh, Pete Carroll. I always go in the opposite of what Pete Carroll says. So a three-week fumble streak for Chris Carson. I'm ready to cut bait. I didn't draft him a lot this year, but are you guys any different? You feel like Carson, you believe in him? So I don't believe in him. I think the the only reason that he's going to have a job next week as the starter is because I don't think Penny's right. Right. So so they have to go to him again. And listen, he could he he's plays the cards next week. It's a get-right game for Chris Carson. If he balls, you're going to sell him. If he yeah, balls out next week, that's your time to sell him. I, I'm i biting the bullet on Will Disley right now. It kind of looks like I was wrong about him, but the dude is not a athletic specimen by any means. He's a, kind of like an offensive guard, if you look <laughs> at him. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't feel comfortable starting him at tight end. Welcome to football, Tyler freaking Lockett. Yeah, right? Welcome to the game, buddy. About damn time you show up. We're starting to get really fed up with you. I really, really like Tyler Lockett, and I would love to own him here on out. Russell Wilson does Russell Wilson things. He's a top three quarterback. I mean, he it's freaking Russell Wilson, baby. 
Yeah. That's how it goes. I mean, the dude just balled. And it's the Saints. Saints always got shootouts. But Russell Wilson threw 50 passes. This man had a new contract, and they said we're going to let him throw the ball more this year. 50 passes. Some had, people don't get that in three weeks. They He had – yeah, Kirk Cousins, I'm looking at you. Uh, <laughs> but he had to. They were behind all game. You know, it's not the script they want. Uh, but they have a quarterback that can do it. So, yeah, if anything, I agree. Sell Chris Carson if he goes off. Penny's a guy I I drafted late because uh, I like his potential there. I had a feeling Chris Carson was going to get injured or something, but maybe he will lose his job because of performance. So if you can add Penny for, you know, pennies on the dollar, no pun intended, that might be a nice little move there. Uh, the Chargers, not much to say here. I mean, it's kind of what we expect every week. It's Keenan Allen. It's Williams, it's Eckler. I feel like Justin Jackson's time is coming. I think you add him now if you dropped him already, if you didn't have him on a deep bench. I'm Justin still I, I, I'm still in the in the in the park of selling Eckler. Not as high as he was after the first couple of weeks, but I think he's still got value and this team faces the Dolphins next week, so it's a really good chance for that team for the Chargers rather to just rack up stacks. Rack up stats, I should say, and their value should be no higher after. Jeez, I can't talk. It's getting late. Their value should be sky high after the Dolphins. So if you're going to sell Chargers, I think wait a week. You guys like anybody else besides Justin Jackson? I feel like he's the guy I want to add late. No, that's it, Justin Jackson. He he yeah. looks really good every he time he's good. on the field. Yeah, yeah. That's it. All right, yeah, you just whispered his name there. That's all I got Justin for the Jackson, tra- baby. I'm just yeah. whispering Justin Jackson. I am not screaming at the rooftop <laughs> for Justin Jackson right now because I don't want anybody to have him. Right. He's mine. I agree. He's freaking mine. If I'm in a league with you and you get Justin Jackson and you pick that from me, I'm driving to your house and we're throwing hands. <laughs> he is mine. This guy is mine. Get. Scoot, scoot. Goodbye. Yep, we've been talking about him since the beginning of the year. So now, if now is now is the time, if you haven't already, the Lions, uh, they're kind of middling a middling team. That's what I feel about them. They aren't beating anyone without some lucky breaks. Uh, we'll talk about Carry On scored again to save his day. I'm not high on Carry On Johnson. I know we kind of talked about adding Ty Johnson off of waivers last week. Hawkinson and again, kind of disappointing, but just, you know that's what you get from rookie tight ends. Um, Galladay had a rough day, so he's a buy low for me. Anything else? I mean, Marvin, so jo- Marvin Jones had the game that we didn't see coming, I guess, is the big story there. But what that's, else? So what's tough for me is you never know from one game to the next which is going to be the wide receiver to own there. Right. Uh, like you said, Marvin Jones had a big game. Hawkinson would have had a touchdown this game. He stepped out of bounds before catching the ball. Uh, so that's just a rookie mistake. It'll get better. I do like carry on. The one thing I do like about carry on is – after they let CJ go, we thought maybe uh, Ty was going to be take some of those touches, but they gave Carry on twenty. Yeah, uh, career you know, high. Yeah, so I like seeing the usage coming out of letting CJ go. Uh, they played a tough defense that that's not a good defense to run on. So I think better days are ahead of car- for Carry on if they keep giving him the ball. I mean, he had his career high game in touches. I mean, that's that's telling in itself. Now he completely. Blew it, 20 touches for 36 yards. I mean, you can't get much worse than that. Let me tell you, that's like a – that's horrible. That's like 1.8 yards per carry. I mean, come on now. That's, that's ridiculous. That's that's Sony Michelle Aaron Jones number. <laughs> yeah. And, right. And I, that's why I'm kind of like, if I can sell carry on, I would right now because you look at the schedule, and I hate to like do matchups, but honestly, the Chiefs next, that's going to be a catch up game. Then they got divisional games against the Packers and the Vikings. Those aren't defenses that are going to get a lot of, you know, those are good defenses. So if I can still carry on right now based on what he's done in the past two weeks for something with a, somebody with a little bit easier matchups, I'd be okay with doing it. Like, I just, well, you- I, don't, I don't feel like the Lions are a super team. They're not a super good team this year. You sell carry on for Miles Sanders, and then you carry on with your year. There you go. That's what you do. By uh, Sanders. One thing that one thing that was brought up that I, I don't really necessarily agree with, I think, is the Kenny Galladay show every week. Kenny Galladay saw eight targets, 
he just couldn't convert some of them to catches. He bobbled a few. I mean, it's going to come for him. Buy him if you can this week. Right. Uh, he's a solid wide receiver, too. He put up 20-something points one of these past weeks. I mean, he had a phenomenal game one of these past weeks. I, I, I know he's better than Marvin Jones, but hopefully teams see this performance by Marvin Jones and then they don't scheme for Galladay as well. Don't yeah. know. I agree. No, yeah, bad game for, for Galladay. I, I wasn't saying uh, drop him, sell him. I think buy him, if anything, if you can. All right, finally, we'll wrap it up with the Steelers. We'll talk about Mason Rudolph. Got his first start. I thought he looked okay. It seems like the team believes that he is the future. They traded their first-round pick away for Minka Fitzpatrick. So uh, they're going with this guy. Thought he made some please, some pretty decent plays. He made some pretty bad plays. People are going to be worried about everyone on that team. Uh, the only guy that really popped out to me, well, first of all, let's talk about Dante Moncrief just being whatever inactive, right? Just yep. not active because we told you last week you could probably drop him. Just can't catch the football. Um, the guy that I've been talking about is Deontay Johnson, or his name is Thompson, isn't it? No, it's Deontay no, Johnson. Is it Johnson? Okay. Deontay Johnson uh, led the team in targets there, I think, didn't he? Six targets, 52 yards, and a touchdown. Yep. He's the... uh, Smith Schuster had seven. He had seven. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Well, second in targets. James Washington was the guy that people thought was going to break out, though. Right. I'm very, very depressed about Smith Schuster. This is a guy who had seven targets, only got three of them. Yeah, some were from bad throws, but some I feel like he could have caught. I like buying Smith Schuster right now. He's just good at football, and he's like, what is he, still a teenager? <laughs> Something like that. I mean, this is a guy that I'm looking to buy. I am very, very, very even more depressed about my boy Jalen Samuels not getting used because we saw James Conner kind of get hurt last week. Jalen Samuels, I will, to my grave, say he is a better football player than James Conner. He's just not getting used. He's not getting used right. And that's just, I mean, that's just how the cookie crumbles, you know. I, I can't call it the plays. So I'm holding. A... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'm holding him because I do see him as being one of the top three backups in the league. We saw what happened whenever Connor went down last year, and we saw Samuels just ball out RB1, baby. That's how it goes. At tight end, don't trust the Steelers tight end. Just, just don't. You can – not start a tight end and possibly get more points. That was the problem I had with Samuels. I think Samuels is a good player, but we all know Tomlin doesn't play two running backs. So it's Connors until he gets hurt. And if Samuels comes in and takes over, that's great. But, you know, as long as as long as their main guy, Connor, is healthy, Samuels is not going to get any play for better or worse. Well, and here's the thing. So. Connor hasn't been statistically very good at all so he's even he's kind of hard to sell like even if you wanted to sell him i don't know if his name value plus the change of quarterback is going to make him an even even harder sell i don't know what you get back for him because you probably drafted him in the first two rounds no so the best you can hope for is a decent game against the Bengals. maybe there's a sell window then he's got the ravens and the chargers and those are both uh, stout run defenses although the ravens got run on this week but um that's you know the the Steelers are not the Chiefs, so that's not going to happen. And then you may have a sell window against the Dolphins. The problem is everybody knows that once the players that play the Dolphins are are guys that are just <laughs> yeah you know you can't yeah. you can't sell them after a Dolphins game. So I think your best sell shot is here after this Bengals game. You hope he plays well and you get a chance to sell him for something. I mean, I'm selling him right now, <laughs> but I you. Mean, it, but what do you what do you expect to get for him? That's the problem, dude. My number one buy is Joe Mixon. That's my number one buy. But you're not. That's what I'm saying. Like you're not. You're not getting anything close to Joe Mixon. Even even though Joe Mixon's played poorly, Connor's played worse and perceived less talent. I feel like you could get Joe Mixon. I really do. Or even I'd even take Marlon Mack over him. I was going to say you know, Marlon Mack just name be, uh, value wise. If somebody sees James Conner, ooh, James Conner for Marlon Mack. But Marlon Mack has been Marlon playing. Mack, yeah, he's stats wise, he's on the winning side there. Right, but name wise, name carries a big thing in the first few weeks. Because people see the name and say, "Oh, well, he's been good. He was good last year. He's going to get better. I'm getting him for cheap." 
and also where he's been drafted. Right. You know, you can People still, still you thinking. can still, yeah, you can still sell first, first, second round talent. But so the, but the that just, windows that windows closing with every bad performance. And I feel like I feel like this is the week because Connor got hurt last week. He can easily get hurt. We know his injury history. I just I don't want to be behind the eight ball when it happens. You know, I, I don't want to be looking at it saying, oh, great, he just got hurt, and I could have made this trade last week. That's what I don't want to do. Yeah. All right, guys, I am exhausted. We've talked football for almost two hours now, and i got to edit the show down. So I want to wrap it up. Uh, I think we've given you a lot of good waiver targets, a lot of good trade ideas and trade values, who to buy. Low and sell high, and I want to remind you all that we will be on Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. live for the Sleeper Wire Mail Sack. We take your phone calls. Write down this phone number, 256-56-SLEEP, 256-567-5337. Call that number Wednesday evening after 8. Ask us questions on who to start, who to sit, trades, waivers, all that stuff. Draft Genius and Jason, thank you so much for being on the show. If you want to reach Jason, it's at BFTG Dr. Mill on Sleeper app. It's at F-L-D-R-M-I-L-B-A-R-G on Twitter. Draft Genius is at SW Draft Genius on the Sleeper app and at The Draft Genius on Twitter. I am Producer Steve at SW Steve on Sleeper, at Toledo Radio on Twitter. Good luck in week four, guys. Thanks for tuning in. 